2011. And folks, since that time, they have contributed a grand total of $1.4 million to the Teach Ag campaign. How about that? $1.4 million. $1.4 million since 2011. And, and we, are, we are so pleased with, with what they've done to help us with the campaign. They've not only helped us out with the Teach Ag campaign, but they've also helped us out uh, with CASE. They have been a tremendous sponsor of the Curriculum for Agricultural Sciences Education. And we appreciate all of their support that they've done for school-based agricultural education all through our wonderful partner, the National FFA Foundation. And so let me just do a quick shout out here to all of the folks that are here. And I know here in the live audience today, we have a number of staff from the FFA Foundation. And my friends, let me also say thank you to you. And I'm not going to call your names because I'll miss somebody, but I see several of you out in the room, and we sure appreciate everything that you do because without your support, uh, for agricultural education, not only would the Teach Ag campaign not be as successful as it is, but school-based agricultural education would not be what it is today without the wonderful support of the National FFA Foundation staff and all of the corporate sponsors and individuals that contribute to school-based ag education through the National FFA Foundation. So thank you, FFA Foundation. So today, we are going to recognize uh, at this, at this uh, uh, pre-event, this pre-announcement, uh, the CHS and the CHS Foundation. And we have with us today from CHS, and they're not going to come forward just yet, but we have three representatives from CHS with us, Mark Biedenfeld, Dan Mack, and Mark Farrell. But to further this announcement and celebration, I want to introduce and bring forward my friend, Molly Ball. Here she is. Molly is president of the National FFA Foundation. Please welcome Molly. And she's going to continue with our celebration. Molly. Thanks, Jay. This is an, indeed an exciting day, an exciting announcement this morning. Thanks to all the, the folks, the hard work of the National FFA Foundation, but also the partnership that we've had with the CHS Foundation and CHS for over 41 years. National FFA has been a partner and has loved the relationship with CHS for 41 years. And we celebrate their commitment today as they join the likes of other partners who we've had for a long time with John Deere, Zoetis, RFD TV, Monsanto, Tractor Supply Company. They join us as a platinum sponsor. And what does a platinum sponsor mean? That means they give over a million dollars to the National FFA and National FFA Foundation in agricultural education. CHS's investment is in, in the future, future of food, fiber, and natural resources. All that agriculture encompasses and all that our teachers are doing to teach in the classroom to ensure the brightest and the best are entering the food and fiber and natural resources industry. We need to shape agriculture teachers for the future, and today is just a day to celebrate, but each day at the National FFA headquarters and with Ag Education, we celebrate all of you, the future of agriculture. So CHS, along with our partners uh, DuPont, Pioneer, BASF, Growth Energy, and Bread Brand, understand the key to success is through education. So thanks to CHS for being a leader in the quality and diverse agricultural teacher recruitment and retention efforts. It's so incredibly important for us to recruit and retain the best teachers for agricultural education so that we have the future of food and we can strengthen agriculture and build our communities. We are so, so excited to be here today and so excited to make this announcement. So I'll call my friend from CHS up, Mark Biedenfeld, to help with the announcement. Mark. And I will uh, call up, uh, actually, if we can just put that to the side. And I will call up uh, the two folks uh, with CHS that were also mentioned earlier. Uh, Mark Farrell uh, from our Board of Directors, lives in rural Wisconsin, is coming up first. And then Dan Mack, who uh, not only is a wonderful employee of CHS, has the opportunity to lead our terminal and transportation operations from a grain marketing and agronomy perspective, but he also sits on the National FFA Sponsor Board. So thank you both for, for being here. And on behalf of the over 11,000 employees and 625,000 producer owners that represent CHS Inc. today, we're really excited to be with you. We're really humbled, and, and, and because we're so honored here, I've actually got some, uh, some uh, uh, prepared remarks I'd like to go through before we get to the, the big announcement. So uh, thank you again, Molly. It's my pleasure to be here with you. As I mentioned, I'm Mark Biedenfeld. I get the opportunity to lead a couple corporate functions at CHS, Alliance Solutions, as well as our stewardship area, which would encompass 
corporate citizenship, and then, of course, the CHS Foundation. You know, when I'm out in the country talking to some of our owners from time to time, it, it might surprise some of you folks, uh, uh, particularly from an agricultural producer perspective, things such as the markets, such as weather, while they're important things, oftentimes they're not the most important things that are on our owners' minds. Uh, farmers and cooperatives are continually asking us, uh, how do we get young people to participate and involved, engaged and prepared for the future in agriculture? The agricultural industry in total, and it's a wonderful opportunity that all of us know and, and have a chance to, to, to live in, and work on a daily basis. And I often respond by saying it's a great question, and we're helping to find that answer each and every day. One of the core focus areas of the CHS Foundation is uh, to develop the, the next generation of agricultural leaders through education and professional development opportunities. Uh, this is a classic example of that here today that we're talking about. And the answer to getting young people engaged in agriculture from our perspective is also part of the reason that uh, you know, we are here today. Developing that next generation of agricultural leaders isn't something that the CHS Foundation can accomplish alone. We rely on our strong partnership with National FFA, National Teach Ag, as well as other folks within the agricultural industry from a broader perspective to help us do that. And today we're extremely proud and humbled to announce that uh, the CHS Foundation will contribute $3.8 million over the next three years to National FFA and National Teach Ag. Thank you, we, we appreciate that. And, and this grant's going to, to build upon some of the existing support uh, of, per, of proficiencies of CDEs in the National Teach Ag STAR program. It also includes new funding for Case Institute teacher scholarships. That's an incredibly important opportunity that we're excited to support. As well as developing a curriculum to teach students about cooperatives. Support of the New Century Farmer program and transition our state FFA grant front support to the National Office for Administrative Purposes. And through all of these different endeavors, this commitment by the CHS Foundation is helping ensure today's students understand the fundamentals of agriculture through hands-on STEM-based education. And we're here helping address the agricultural teacher shortage through National Teach Ag's work to retain ag teachers and find the future ag teachers that all of us, of course, will need and be looking for. We're also excited about partnering to create new opportunities around cooperative education curriculum. As the charitable giving arm of CHS Inc., uh, you know, we are the nation's leading and largest farmer-owned cooperative, and we recognize the importance of the cooperative business model to not only helping farmers stay profitable, but also be successful for the long run. And by partnering with National Teach Ag to develop curriculum and working with ag educators to reach more than 650,000 students with FFA, we are here helping ensure a strong cooperative system for many years to come. So in closing, I want to say thank you to a few folks. I want to say thank you to National FFA. You know, Maggie Stith is out here in the audience. We appreciate the support that Maggie and others with FFA provide CHS and the CHS Foundation. Uh, and of course, we'd like to thank National Teach Ag Ellen Thompson, you've been a wonderful partner, as well as the other folks at National Teach Ag, and we can't thank you enough for the, for the opportunity to be here with you today. You know, we'd also like to thank the, the, the teachers, particularly the ag teachers that we're, we're here to, uh, to recognize and work with, who work tirelessly on behalf of the industry and on behalf of their students and their students' parents and families to make sure that the opportunities are available and are executed upon within the agricultural industry. And lastly, and, and most importantly, we'd like to thank the students. You know, it's a wonderful opportunity you have within agriculture. I, I hope all of you understand that and understand what is in front of you and just the tremendous opportunities that you have. And we want you to take advantage of that. And we're hopeful that CHS and the CHS Foundation, through this gift that we just announced, can be a small part of making sure that the agricultural industry and you as students can be successful for years to come. So with that, thank you. Fantastic. Lord, a little bit for me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> With is it is this podium movable?
Can we just scoot this podium over? Roll it down a little bit. Can I move this here? So, is this? Can one cash this? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got routing numbers on it. I don't know. Maybe lower it just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Can we drop it? Eric says drop it. Drop it. Lower. No, don't drop it, but lower it. <laughs> All right, all set. Thank Excellent, thank you. Thank you very much. Are we doing the video?
Good afternoon and welcome to the 8th Annual National Teach Ag Day! Yay! Hey everybody that's watching out there, welcome. We hope that you have a wonderful afternoon joining us celebrating agriculture teachers and agricultural education and hopefully for a great many of you considering a career teaching agriculture. We are here this afternoon from the beautiful campus of the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences and this is our fifth live stream our very first live stream was from the Buena Park High School in Buena Park, California. And so this is the, the next time we've been back at a high school and just the energy and the amazing things that are going on here that you're gonna hear from the students and the teachers and the principal. Um, this is where magic happens and this is the kind of thing that's happening all across the country with the 12,000 plus ag teachers and 8,000 programs every day. Teachers making magic and making a difference with students, over a million agricultural education students uh, every year. So welcome. We're going to, we have a lot of wonderful things planned for you today. Those of you that are joining us via social media, remember to use the hashtag tagged17 and you may be featured um, during our live webcast. And also um, if you have a locked account or a private account, just know that we can't see that then. So if you're wondering why you weren't maybe featured and you have a locked account, that might be the vine. So if there was ever a reason to unlock it and let the world see your stuff, um, today would be that day. So again, we're really excited to be here. You're going to hear from a number of individuals. We've got four ag teachers who are here and ready to share their amazing stories. We've got 16 agriculture teachers from all across the country um, who are here to share their story. We've also got some very special guests from Purdue University joining us today. Hey, Purdue. <laughs> And also a group of students from Michigan State that made the journey over here. So welcome Michigan State University. So thank you to them. And you'll be meeting a number of other wonderful individuals throughout the day. So what I'd like to do now is, as I said, we are on this amazing campus that I wish you could see for yourselves. And you're almost going to be able to. So I'd like to take a moment now and introduce Mr. William Hook, who is the principal of the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences. He's going to talk to you and welcome you officially and then give you a tour virtually of the school through a, a little video. So welcome, Mr. Hook. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to welcome everyone on behalf of the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. We're so proud to be hosting this event. We want to thank National uh, uh, Teach Ag for, for selecting us as a, as a host site. We're, we're thrilled, thrilled to be here. Uh, we want to welcome everybody from National Teach Ag, all the corporate sponsors for, for, for being here and for sponsoring uh, such a great event. Uh, we also want to uh, welcome the, the uh, ag teachers and future ag teachers. Uh, that, that's what we're here to celebrate today. And, and uh, we're, we're lucky enough to have nine ag teachers at our school, and uh, believe me, we celebrate them every day, we appreciate them every day. What they do and, and what you're choosing to do is just a, one of the most noble things you can, you can choose to, 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 to do for a living. Um, it's a great profession. We want to make sure we bring great people into this great profession, and, and ultimately, we're all here to serve the same purpose, and that's provide great opportunities for our great kids. So uh, welcome here for the day. We, um, uh, are, again, are very glad to have you. Uh, glad to see the uh, uh, people on, on Facebook that are watching. Please follow along with us. Uh, it's, it's a great place. Uh, I'm a little biased, but, but it is a great place to be, great place to teach ag. And uh, again, we want, just want to welcome everybody here for, for what is going to be a great day. And uh, again, thank you for choosing this profession and uh, providing great things for, for students. So, you know.
So as you can see, it's an amazing facility. And if you ever get the opportunity, um, as you saw from the students, that they will be happy to come and give you a tour. Many of our guests, the 70 or so guests that are here with us today had the opportunity this morning to take to go on a tour. And then um, about 2.10 today, we're going to live stream um, some of the stuff that they've got going on. They're going to take us through each of their pathways. So amazing school wonderful faculty, wonderful students, and we're just so grateful to be here. So as agriculture teachers, they have to be creative and they have to be able to think quickly on their feet, and sometimes they have to bluff their way through some things. So we've got six agricultural education leaders who have at one time or another been in the classroom. So we're gonna test their skills today and see how they are at being creative, how they are at being um, thinking on their feet and how they are at bluffing. So perhaps you've seen the Box of Lies game on the Jimmy Fallon show. So we're doing Box of Lies, Stump the Expert, Teach Ag version with some of our agricultural education and Chaz leaders. So our first group, and here's how it's gonna go. So our wonderful Chaz students um, are holding six items and we don't know what's in them. They have been created by someone else. And our ag ed leaders are going to pick one and then they're going to explain what's in it. Now they can do one of two things. They can explain what is exactly in there or they can make it up. So in our first round, we have Dr. Jackman, who is the NAA Executive Director. Round of applause, please. And we have Mr. William Hook, principal of the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. So they are our first pairing. And so they are going to, again, choose a box and then explain what's in it. And so Jay is going to pick first. Yes. And Mr. Hook is going to decide if he is telling the truth or if he is making up what is in his box. So this is teach ag version, so there could be any number of things in the box. Okay, can I hold the boxes? Can I shake them? Nope. Can I do? Mm -mm. I just have to pick like this. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Wait, wrong game show. Um, <laughs> okay, box number one. Box number one. Okay. okay, now what do we do? So you're going to take it very carefully. Very, very carefully. carefully. This is me Over taking it very carefully. Over to your area. Yes, go. But move quickly because we're timed. Everything is timed. Okay. No. <clears throat> quickly and, and slowly at the same time. Okay, open it up and show the audience. We'll step back in case it's alive. Yeah, that you don't. Who knows? Uh, oh, oh. How interesting. Show everyone. I can't show everyone. I can't, Bill might see it. <laughs> But, uh, really? You want me to show it? Yeah. Okay, but you can't peek. Okay. 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 So now, tell Mr. Hook what is in your okay, cardboard Bill. item. What what I what I have to describe for you here is a wonderful agricultural education instructional materials exhibit. This is the CD and some of the, um, the instructional tools that we use in the Curriculum for Agricultural Sciences Education Intro to Animal uh, Science course, the, the Agriculture Science Animal course. So the box is the case Animal Science uh, the case AgriScience Animal CD and some of the instructional materials and tools that are used in that course. I'm believing it. Does he have the mic? He has the mic. I do. Okay. And uh, so, Mr. Hook, your years of experience working with students, telling you all kinds of things, all kinds of potential excuses. Although I'm sure you don't get any of those from your <laughs> of students. Not, no. um, do you think that Dr. Jackman was telling you what was in his box is accurate? Or do you think that it is indeed a lie? You know what? I don't think he'd come to the school and lie to me. I, I think he's, I think he's, <laughs> I don't you, think he would dare do that. Him? <laughs> I, I don't think he would dare do that. I, I think he's telling me the truth. Dr. Jackman, what was in your box? Well, you clearly don't know me very well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what, so what's in the box is, is kind of a sample farmyard with, uh, with horses, uh, pigs, uh, 
a goat and sheep, and it looks like they're eating hard candy. I don't know why they're eating hard candy, but that's what it looks like. Oh, you're good. Okay, all right. So... Thank you, and you really used your creative skills as an ag teacher, and you got a chance to talk a little bit about Case. And I could show what a great liar I am. <laughs> I could say lots of things, <laughs> signs my check. So thank you, Dr. Jackman, and, and now Mr. Hook is going to choose a box. All right. Um, let me go with number three. Okay, yeah, take it over to him. Okay, there we go. Thank you. All right. Okay, he's going to open it. Not cheating. This is me not cheating. Everybody sees? Not tall enough. Story of my life. Not tall <laughs> enough. <laughs> okay, Mr. Right. Hook. Yes. All right. Into your right. mic. Okay, I am looking at a box with a Ziploc bag that has what appears to be uh, a mix of horse feet and a mason jar with some type of blue water, blue dyed water with something that I can't see in it. Hmm. Well, I can't imagine that you could make that up. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mr. Hook, Bill, I'm going to say that you're telling the truth. I, I, I am. Believe you. For a change, I am. Okay. <laughs> and all of those items are things that you would find in a classroom at Chaz, right? Yes. You have yes. animals here on site. Mason you have jars. a food yes. science lab. Yep. So all of these things, in the weirdest sense, really do tie to agriculture sure, and Chaz. Yep. So thank you to our very first group. And you have a very truthful principal <laughs> yes. at Chaz. Thank you. All right, so our next pair to come up, um, Dr. Brown and Ms. Jamonica Marion. So Dr. Brown is the uh, United States Department of Education representative for agricultural education out in Washington, D.C., and does amazing things on behalf of adv advocating for agricultural education. And Ms. Jamonica Marion, we, let's give Jamonica a huge round of applause because she has done so much work for today. She always answers my emails immediately, like has made this thing happen. So her and Miss Fowler are fantastic. So congratulations to them. So um, agriculture teacher now and also in an administrative role. So she really should have some amazing skills. I, I tend to think so. Yes, I agree. I think she does. So ladies first. So pick your magic. Look at their faces. How do I, they're how so do I choose the box when they're all my students? I know. How do I do they're that? so sweet. Um, a six. They haven't a shared what's in there, have they? I know. No, they haven't. I, I promise. Sure I promise. Here. I think I am going to go with an even. No, an odd number. I'm going to go with box number five. Final call, box number five. That's what I was going to pick. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ladies first, though. <laughs> All right, so I have a box. Inside of my box, I, this is so hard. I have, you know, I like to travel. So there's a mode of transportation here. Um, it's not by rail or water. Um, it has wings. So I think it's an airplane, um, but it's something weird on top of it. I think it's a, the a space cow. Show? No, it's not a spaceship. I think it's a cow, though. You think it's um, a cow on top? Okay. But the plane is flying on a plate that's black, and it has a place setting. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Do you see the amazing teacher skills that are happening right now with Miss Marion? Like she's doing such a great descriptive job, but not trying to give it away, but trying to help Dr. Brown. Yeah, Dr. Brown, I think we're supposed to eat a plane that is carrying a cow on top. It's not even inside the plane. It's on top. Am I telling the truth? 
Oh. Or am I lying? Well, you're trying to describe if cows can fly. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> but I'm going to say that uh, you, you probably are describing something that is actually in the box. That uh, probably, rep you know, some, the person that crafted that box may think about agriculture as very global. And so, therefore, they were trying to think about flight and agriculture and some of the agricultural industries. So I'm going to say you're telling the truth. You're absolutely correct. I am telling the truth. Thank you. Because she always wants her students to be successful. <laughs> I was sweating that one. Okay, okay. here we go. So, what's so two, two corrects now and one wrong? Okay, so okay. Let's get this what are you going right. to choose? I'm well, hoping. these are your students, so you know you should ha you have an advantage because you should understand their what they have in their boxes, you know. But I don't know if I can describe it correctly. But I have to pick one. Remember, they're leaving, so I would need to know oh, what's in the oh. box. Oh, I'm going to pick box number four because it takes approximately four years for a t person to become certified in agriculture education when they go to college, and so that's my. I'm going to pick four. Not even way to go. That was good, right? I'm going to show it to the audience. No peeking. Okay. I want to look inside mine to make sure. Tell me, guys. Tell me what's in it. Well, if I can get it open. They glued it shut, I think. So it's an empty box? No, it's not empty. <laughs> it's black in color, has three rings, has a green cover, and it's something very, very valuable to ag teachers. It, it, it actually represents something electronic, something with a screen. It might have a finger pad with it. And it's green? It is green, but might have a finger pad with it. It might have a screen. It might even use something like a mouse with it. That would never fit inside of a little box like that. You know, great things come in small packages. <laughs> so am I telling you the truth? I don't know, kids. Is he telling lie? me the truth? Or... <laughs> Killing them. I, they want to help you. Think it's not the truth. <gasps> it's oh my not gosh. the truth. It's you don't think it's the truth. Help her. Future teachers, help me. Is it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's the truth. Okay. You are correct. Oh, well, what is it? Tell me. Well, it's their version of an interactive notebook, like a notebook computer that's interactive. <laughs> that's the way I interpreted it, that. So uh, you did a great job. I shouldn't have said it was green. That way, that probably was a little more of a giveaway. Yeah. But you did a great job. Dr. You did too. And Dr. You know, Brown, do you have a quick shout out to anyone? And Miss Marion, do you have a quick shout out to anyone you'd like to say happy National Teach Ag Day to? Well, I like to say happy Teach Ag Day to all agriculture teachers. They are the cream of the crop. They are good role models. They are servant leaders for agricultural education, for education, for career and technical education. And my shout out is to them just to say thank you for what you do each and every day to educate our most valuable, the most important commodity we have in this country, our youth. And I just want to say thank you for uh, providing that uh, for our students. My shout out goes to the other Ag Ambassadors that are not here today that I know are watching and live streaming. Thank you for giving me that support from behind the scene. And also to the other Ag teachers here at Chicago Ag who are actually in class right now teaching students the importance of agriculture. Okay, our last pair. So we have Ms. Sheila Fowler, who is assistant principal here at the Chicago High School for Agricultural Science, former agriculture teacher um, here at CHAZ, and Mr. Jess Smithers from the um, Illinois State Agricultural Education staff. So again, both former ag teachers should have tremendous skills in this area. So why don't you, so Ms. Fowler, do you want six or two? Um, I'm going to go with six. Okay. I'm going to go with six. You're going to have two then. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, Ms. Fowler, go ahead. Yes, please. Okay. Okay, 
Everybody see? <laughs> nice. Okay, Jess. Um, this is what I believe are the um, supplies to make a soybean beanie baby, which I believe was originally from Ag in the Classroom. Um, it's like little plastic bags, about two by three, um, some green yarn, a little bag of soybeans, and a container of um, these crystal type things that I think go in the bag. And then there's also a hole punch. And that's what's in my box. I'm very familiar with that. Are but you? I, <laughs> I think you're lying. <gasps> Curses. Yes, I'm lying. <laughs> It's a bag of safety goggles and a bunch of wood shavings. <laughs> Which are very important in an agricultural education. But I feel like I right. accurately described the Beanie Baby project. You did. Project. Okay. Very good. Do you have a shout out, Ms. Fowler, to anyone for National Teach Ag Day? Um, sure. Same shout out I gave earlier out there um, to University of Illinois College of ACES and specifically the Ag Education Program. Great. Thank They've you. They brought a lot of ag teachers to our school. <laughs> okay. Mr. Smithers. It's up to you. Clo bring us home. So, Sheila, in my box is something that you would love to have on your desk. <clears throat> it's very appropriate for Illinois. Okay. Very appropriate for our event today. It's a, it's a plaque shaped like Illinois. And using what appears to be Fruit Loops, they've made a FFA emblem. So a plaque shaped like Illinois with an FFA emblem made out of Fruit Loops. The emblem is made out of Fruit Loops. Well, not a lot of detail, but I can tell <laughs> I can tell that is, it is Fruit Loops, and I can tell it is the emblem. <laughs> the owl and the plow aren't the best, but I can tell what it is. Okay. So it's a very crude <laughs> FFA emblem. <laughs> very crude. Okay, this sounds actually too weird to be true, so I think you're bluffing. I think you're lying. I was looking. What? Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm looking for the fruit loops. No fruit loops. So our six former teachers and agriculture teachers did a great job today showcasing some of the skills that it takes to be an agriculture teacher. Again, being creative, being fun, being willing to try new things. If that all sounds pretty good to you, then stick with us and see if being an ag teacher might be the thing for you. So. I'm going to turn it over now to Miss Elisa Russ, Elisa Russ, who is the National Teach Ag Campaign intern, and she's going to share just a couple of things that are going on in social media. Thank you. All right. We have a lot of uh, stuff going on on social media. I'd like to give a quick shout out to um, my dad and my sister back home um, in Iowa and all the ag teachers in Iowa. Thank you for all you do. You guys never cease to amaze me. Um, the first shout out we have is Ty Taylor. He says, thank you to the teachers who put time into my growth. The job of agriculture education is difficult. The ag teachers in my life took that difficult job and made it fun. Thank you. Minnesota Soybean says, it's national hashtag teach ag day. Thank you to all the educators across the state, inspiring and creating the next generation of leaders. Those updates throughout the day, so I appreciate that, and she'll be watching that. Um, and even though the, the live feed ends in a couple of hours, we'll continue on the social media conversation um, throughout the day. So I have the very privilege and honor now of introducing you to Ms. Jesse Lumpkins. Jesse is an agriculture teacher at McGavick High School in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, amazing agriculture teacher. They're doing wonderful things down there, some of the similar things that they're doing here at CHAZ in terms of animals and engaging students who, who don't necessarily have a background in agriculture and using agriculture to teach students. Because that's really what agriculture teachers do. 
They use the amazing content that is provided in agriculture and use it to teach students life lessons, job skills, career opportunities, and just overall how to be good uh, members of their community. So I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Jessie Lumpkins, and she's going to share with you her story of agricultural education and encourage you to teach ag. So please come on up, Jessie. Good afternoon. Um, so often when we hear people talk about, why should I teach agriculture, they ask the question, well, what's a day in your job like? And I think the cliche answer right now is, well, no two days are the same. And we hear that a lot. But first of all, that's very true. Um, if you asked anybody in this room that's an agriculture teacher every single day for the rest of their career, they may not be able to answer the same thing twice. Um, but as I reflected on that, I tried to think of what are the days that I have? What's, what's reoccurring themes? If you're an agriculture teacher, there will be days when you get to teach your students what you love. I love teaching my students about poultry science. And so when they like to hear about chickens and they get excited, I go home at the end of the day and I feel fulfilled. But there will be also days when you have to say to your students, I don't know. And what being an agriculture teacher taught me is that it's a lifelong learning profession. I didn't know I loved learning as much as I do until I became an agriculture teacher. There will be days when you've worked really hard on something with your students and they succeed. Maybe you win a CDE or they're elected to an office and on those days, you also feel really fulfilled. But I'll tell you there are just as many days if not more when you work really hard on something and your students put a lot of time and effort into it and they don't win or they fall short. And those are the more important days because we have to teach our students what it's like to lose with humility. And not to do these things because we want to wrap ourselves in personal glory, but because we want to learn those skills uh, for the future, regardless of the outcome. Um, there will be days that your students are discriminated against because maybe the color of their skin, their zip code, what they wear, who they worship, who they love, what their name is, what they call themselves. And on those days, it's your job to be their champion. And if you've ever felt like you didn't belong in the FFA or in agriculture, you can imagine, imagine how important it is that we have those people of all different backgrounds being able to bring more people into the fold of agriculture education and FFA. Um, we need your unique experience and perspective so that we can continue to make this a very diverse and inclusive organization. And then there'll be days that you have a full circle moment. You know, your heart is full. And that day for me is today. Um, I sat in my ninth grade agriculture class and I thought maybe I want to be an ag teacher. I also thought maybe I'll be an ag journalist. I like taking pictures. But then my ag teacher was talking about ag history, and she said, you know, the first African-American and first urban president of FFA was from this school in Chicago where all they do is talk about agriculture all day. And that's when I looked up. Because I, I grew up in the country and I loved it, but I'm intrigued by the diversity and the goings-on of a bigger place. And I thought, how amazing would it be if we could challenge students who probably will never go on to be farmers to think about their role in agriculture. And that was the day I knew I wanted to teach agriculture. And now, as Ellen said, I teach in an urban place. Hi to my kids at McGavick. Um, I'm so proud of them. We're in the middle of the city. And we've got a bunch of alpacas running around and goats and chickens and all kinds of fun stuff. And they would have never had that before. So that in and of itself is fulfilling. But to be able to stand quite literally in the place that inspired me to do this job in the first place, um, is what makes me feel so fulfilled. So what I want to end on is you might think, well, you know, these jobs are important, but if I don't do it, somebody will. But I want to ask you, who is that? And are you sure that they'll do that? Um, I think 100 programs closed last year because there was nobody to fill them. And it's easy to think of that when it's a blank name on a page or when it's a building that we'll never walk into, so it doesn't matter that nobody fills that role. But what if we thought of it more as like a quilt, you know, one of my prized possessions is a quilt my mom made me. Every year that we teach agriculture, we're stitching it together more. Those students and those experiences are held together by the love and the effort of that ag teacher. And when they retire, they're quite literally holding that masterpiece, that tapestry out in their hands, begging somebody to take it, add to it, care for it. And if they don't, it's going to get dropped. It's going to get soiled and possibly even discarded forever. So if the thought of that, of that legacy being lost makes you want to sit up on the edge of your chair a little bit more and reach out and grab it and take care of it, then this profession is for you, and I welcome you to it. Thank you.
you can see why we wanted her to be here with us today to share her story and to encourage others to teach agriculture. And the students at McGavick are very lucky to have her as their ag teacher. We've asked um, teachers and anyone really to send us someone that they've tagged to teach ag. And so now I'd like you to meet some of them and also some of the institutions and colleges that have submitted videos um, on behalf of National Teach Ag Day. Today we were on the plains of Auburn observing the ag teacher in his national habitat. Look at that, an ag teacher teaching students by hands-on experience about agriculture. Yeah, I want to see an ag teacher pushing the young to take leadership roles. The ag teacher in his natural habitat teaches the young agriculturists about the supervised agricultural experience. Please consider joining the herd and teach ag. We'll be meeting some others um, throughout the rest of the, the live webcast. And as you can see, a lot of talent out there and amazing future great agriculture teachers. Speaking of amazing, fu great, amazing future great agriculture teachers, we have 16 of them here today. So they came in last night and they're um, engaging in some professional development. They were able to tour the school this morning. And so this is the future of agricultural education. And we are so pleased um, to be able to invest in them because of the investments that our sponsors have made in the National Teach Ag campaign. I'd like to introduce you now to the facilitator of this conversation, Ms. Elisa Smith. She is the Associate Executive Director for the National Association of Agricultural Educators, so she gets to keep Dr. Jackman in line. <laughs> yes, not an easy task by any means. Former agriculture teacher herself, amazing agriculture advocate for agriculture teachers and really has dedicated her career at NAAE to ensuring that agriculture teachers have what they need to be successful in the classroom. So let's meet these 16 ag teachers and take it away, Miss Elisa. Well, thank you, Ellen, and happy National Teach Ag Day, everyone. I want to give a shout out right now to all of the NAAE members that are at home doing what they do best, teaching agriculture. So happy National Teach Ag Day to you. As Ellen said, we have 16 of the finest future ag teachers, and I get to speak with them this morning, and I feel very blessed to be able to do that. So what we'll be doing is we're going to ask them some questions and let them um, answer those questions, but also give a shout out to individuals that they would like to recognize that have been a part of their ag ed journey. So we'll get started right away, and the first up we have is Matthew Anguano from Kansas State University. Um, Matthew, what is it like living in a dorm with so many people? Uh, I'd first like to give my first shout out to uh, Amanda West there at Abilene High School where I'm originally from. And to answer your question there at K-State, they pride themselves on being a family and living in the dorms, that's exactly what it is. Uh, they make sure that you feel at home and that it's basically your second family. It's your home away from home. All right. Thank you, Matthew. That's just like ag, ag education. We like to, to keep it in the family. Next, we have Katie Compton from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Katie, tell me, what do you look for during your campus tour before deciding on, like, going to the University of Nebraska-Lincoln? 
So I'd like to give a shout out to my um, high school ag teacher, Mr. Tim Nollett, back in Cody Kilgore in central Nebraska. And one thing that I looked for get, um, on my tour for college was I wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable and because um, that's going to be your home away from home. So I wanted to, instead of focusing on materialistic kind of things like does the rec center have a pool or not, I focused more on um, the connections I was making with the people that I met there and I asked the students things like what's dorm life like and the more social aspect. Some super good advice. Next we have Ellie Daney from Virginia Tech. Ellie, how do you know that being an ag teacher is what you want to do? Um, first, I'd like to give a shout out to all of the ag education professors at Virginia Tech because they are the ones who truly inspire me and they all inspire me in different ways. But to answer your question, I knew I wanted to teach ag after taking ag, ag education programs with Donna Westville Rudd because I got to do in-school observations and it was a really great opportunity and it really told me that I wanted to be an ag teacher in the future. And that's what I strive to be is like those who I got to observe during that class. Awesome, all right. All right, next we have Kate, Caitlin Gitchell from the University of Tennessee Martin. Caitlin, tell me, when is the best time to apply for scholarships? Well, first I'd like to give a shout out to my college advisor, Dr. Will Bird, and my high school ag teacher, Mr. Jeremy Fair. And to answer your question, um, the most important thing to remember when filling out scholarships is to not wait to the last minute. Uh, the general deadline is between October and February, but if you have any further questions, you can contact your college and they can give you any further details that you need. Thanks, Caitlin. That's great. No procrastination, guys. That's what she's saying. All right, next up we have Taylor Cooper from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Tell me, Taylor, do you need a four-year degree to teach agriculture? All right, first a shout out to my mom and dad. My dad is my ag teacher, and my mom is pretty much his right-hand woman for all <laughs> things that come with that. And to answer your question, for if you want to teach in a high school, um, a four-year degree or a bachelor's degree equivalent uh, is what is required to teach. But if you want to be an av advocate for agriculture, it doesn't take a degree. It just takes the knowledge that you have growing up on a farm or growing up in industry to be able to educate those around you. All right, awesome advice. All right, next we have Trey Gross from Texas A&M University. Tell me, Trey, what types of classes do you take in your college there at Texas A&M? First off, I would like to give a shout out to my high school ag teacher, Miss Lisa Peeper from Caldwell High School in Caldwell, Texas. Um, and at Texas A&M, as a freshman and sophomore, you spend your time knocking out your core requirements. Um, then you can lean more towards animal and plant science and ag systems to kind of find your niche. And then your junior and senior year are spent lesson planning or making lesson plans, um, observing secondary education classrooms, and then student teaching right before you graduate. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. All right. Next up, um, we have Anna Hall from Purdue University. Hi, Anna. Tell me who inspired you to become an agriculture teacher? I was inspired to become an agriculture teacher by my ag teacher, Mrs. Danielle Walker. She really made an, an impact in my life, and I hope that someday I can impact my students the way she impacted me. Awesome. Next up, we have Amber Johnson, and Amber goes to Oklahoma State University, and she's going to give us some advice on what she would um, tell her freshman self now that she has advanced in her degree. What, would, what advice would you give your freshman self? Well, first, I would like to say thank you to my high school ag teacher, Mr. Mac DeVilbus, for inspiring me to be here today. Um, and the advice I would give my freshman self is to just keep going. You might want to be out there in the real world and get started on your career, but you need to stay in college and really focus on yourself, finding out what you want to be and what you want to do in your life before you can get out there and get started. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Amber. All right, in the back we have Sarah Landis from the Ohio State University. Sarah, tell me about some things that you can get involved in on campus as an ag ed major. First off, I would like to thank my first agricultural educator, Jenna Jensen, for really inspiring me to be the person I am today and also helping uh, kind of jumpstart this whole growth of becoming an agricultural educator myself. Um, so I'm involved with two major organizations at Ohio State University, um, one being Sigma Alpha, which is a professional agricultural sorority, um, as well as the Agricultural Education Society, uh, where in both organizations, 
I serve as a committee chair. I think it's very important that you get in heavily involved in just a few organizations instead of spreading yourself out way too thin in a lot of different things. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. All right, next up, Chad. Um, we have Chad Lewis from the University of Tennessee Martin. And Chad, in your, your time at University of Tennessee Martin, do you get to practice being an agriculture teacher while you're there? So I'd like to give a huge thank you to my advisor at UT Martin, Dr. Will Bird, and to my parents, Alan and Tammy Lewis. They were really the influence and drive behind me wanting to become a teacher. But as far as experience you get before you go into the classroom, that is an absolute yes. You get to do student observations at any college that you go to where you observe a teacher while they're working in their own classroom. And then later on, when you're about to finish out your senior year, you get to do student teaching, which is where you actually get to be a teacher in a classroom at a high school, where the high school teacher there helps you out and encourages you and mentors you along the way until you graduate. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have Chelsea Snyder from the University of California, Davis. Tell me, Chelsea, if you don't have an agriculture background, can you still be an ag teacher? Yeah. So um, first out... First off, shout out to Dr. Lynn Martindale back in California. She's my ag advisor. And also Amber Charter, who I'm student teaching with right now. Um, to answer the question, I never had any ag experience. And once I got to college, I found out about the three ring model of ag education. And I realized how amazing it is. So if, you have, if you're passionate about that model like I am, then you can be an ag teacher. Awesome. And we're happy to have you too. All right. Next, we have Justine Selk from the University of Wisconsin River Falls. Justine, do ag ed majors do things together on campus? I'd really like to thank Bruce Brunner from Sheboygan Falls High School. He definitely gave me this opportunity to be here and go into ag education. But to answer your question, yes, a lot of us ag ed, we do actually hang out on campus. We go to a lot of different events together, and we also hang out off of campus. So we're like one big happy family, like we explained before. Yeah, we're seeing a theme there that I get is one big happy family. Next, we have Haley Sherman from the Ohio State University. Tell me, Haley, what resources do you use to help you design and prepare lessons? Okay, so first I want to give a shout out back to Northwest Ohio to my home ag teacher, Mrs. Shaley Logan. Um, but to answer your question, I believe that as ag teachers we need to collaborate with each other. So I used a variety of online resources specifically for agricultural educators, including the NAAE um, website. Thank you for getting on there. That's right. All right. Next, we have India Titus from West Virginia University. India, tell me, where have you traveled to by being an agriculture education major? I'd like to say thank you to my home ag teachers, Mr. Tim Kaneen, and the West Virginia State Teacher of the Year, Ms. Caitlin Thorsell. We're really proud of your accomplishment. One thing that they taught me, which I think a lot of ag teachers teach, is to take hold of every opportunity given to you. And through that, travel comes with that. And through taking those opportunities offered to me as an ag ed major, I've traveled to observe programs across the state of West Virginia into the surrounding areas, Ohio, Pennsylvania, to their larger industry farms, and even to national convention, research conferences, and now here to Chicago for FAST. Awesome. We're glad to have you. All right, next we have Claire Wagner from the University of Kentucky, and I have to say, go Wildcats, right? All right. Claire, share with me. Hold on just a second. <laughs> I got excited about UK. That's my problem. Uh, tell me, do you have to be a former FFA member to be an agriculture teacher? Okay, I need to thank uh, my home high school, Marshall County High School in Western Kentucky, and my ag advisors, uh, Mr. Alan Smith and Mr. Doug Lyles. I wouldn't be here without you, so thank you much. And no, no way, you do not have to be a former FFA member to be an ag teacher. If you love agriculture and you love students and you're up for the challenge for making their lives better and preparing them for future careers, then we want you. So please don't be scared and step up to the plate. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And last but not least, we have Courtney Walker from the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Welcome, Courtney. Tell me, what advice do you have to someone considering agriculture education? I would tell them the same thing that my advisor and friend, Dr. Erica Tiemann, told me. Um, do it. Go for it. If you love helping people, if you 
feel like you're succeeding when you help other people succeed, agricultural education is for you. Um, and just like my advisor and mentor, Dr. Cor uh, Dr. Cordy told me, uh, teaching ag is not a profession, it's a calling. Um, and all of us here feel called to do it. And if you feel called, it's, it's a wonderful path to pursue. Awesome. Well, thank you guys today for sharing with everyone out there about teaching agriculture. Um, as you can see, the future is very bright with these individuals up to be the next um, future ag teachers. Um, I would also welcome you to be a part of the National Association of Agriculture Educators once you get into your classroom because we have lots to offer uh, for teachers and for your profession. So thank you guys today and that is, that is a wrap for our pre-service. Thank you. All right, thank you. So you were able to hear from 16 individuals from about 14 institutions. There are about 100 institutions across the country offering a degree in agricultural education. And so you saw a small sampling of this and you would see probably very much the similar kinds of students across those 100 institutions. So there is a place for you to get an agricultural education degree wherever you are. Um, so uh, Elissa, what's going on in social media? Yes. We have a lot of posts coming in with hashtag tagged 17 at Fati underscore Riviera says, thank you for all the uncontrollable laughter, pep talks, help, and most importantly, for all the unconditional love, win or loss. At Miss underscore Shear says, National Teach Ag Day, just another day in paradise. Ag teacher by choice, not by chance. Hashtag teach ag. John Forch would like to give a shout out to his favorite agriculture teacher, Mr. Rhodes, here at the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. And finally, uh, Leah Jacob shares a photo of four of her agriculture teachers and how they've impacted her. She says, happy National Teach Ag Day, everyone. Don't forget to say thanks to those who never forget to invest in us. Hashtag tagged 17, hashtag inspire ag ed. Wonderful, thank you. So keep all of that conversation going. You never know when the thing that you're saying is going to be the thing that inspires someone to go into this profession or to consider a career in agriculture. We know that many agriculture teachers are agriculture teachers because of the influence of their agriculture teacher. So sometimes it's as simple as saying, hey, did you think that you would make a great agriculture teacher? And and that you might be the one that does that for someone. So now we're going to meet some of our celebrities. So in agricultural education, we have lots of celebrities. We actually have about 12,000 celebrities because of about 12,000 agriculture teachers. And then we have our amazing supporters who make agricultural education possible. So we're going to be meeting a few of them and also learning a little bit about each of them and what it's like to be an agriculture teacher and some of the agriculture industries that support agricultural education. So I'd like to introduce Mr. Scott Stone, who is an agriculture teacher. You'll be hearing from him a little bit later too, an agriculture teacher at Centralia High School in Missouri. And Mr. Dan Mack, who works um, at CHS in Invergrove Heights, Minnesota. And obviously those of you heard earlier, great supporter of agricultural education and the $3.8 million investment that they just made um, to agricultural education. So what's gonna happen now is, Mr. Dan Mack is going to come over here and stand right there. And Scott is going to come over here. And yes, yeah, this is friendly, it's all in good fun. <laughs> And so some wonderful Chaz students have terms. So um, Scott is going to try to describe terms that are related to being an agriculture teacher. To Mr. Dan Mack, who has never been an agriculture teacher. However, you would be fabulous. So if things don't work out at CHS, we'd love to have you in Ag Ed. So Scott's gonna describe the terms Dan's going to try to think of what it's like to be an agriculture teacher and what those terms might be while um, one of our wonderful Chaz students holds them up. And then they're going to switch places. And Scott's going to try to understand what, the, what CHS and the cooperative um, business model is. So, okay. So are you, do you have Scott's terms? Okay. Oh, yeah. One moment. Okay, here we go. He can't say the word, obviously. He just has to use descriptors and 
Dan has to try to, and once he gets them, then you can go on to the next one. All right, we're ready. This is great. Go. The state directly below Iowa. Uh, Nebraska. No, no. Below. <laughs> directly below. Um, it's harder than you think. It's like stump the chump. Uh, <laughs> MO is our abbreviation. Is there... Thank you. <laughs> um, Donald Trump is currently the... President. Um, we all live in a bunch of houses and people, and we work together, and we call Community. that our... Um, if I go out and I speak on behalf of an industry and I try to promote it, that's called... Ambassador. Um, uh, but we... Proponent. Uh, no. Um, if I was going to... Advocate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, if I go to learn something to make me better at my, my job or my, what I do, that's called... Education. No, we sit in these, as teachers, we sit in these a lot. Um, you probably get them in industry as well, where somebody comes in and teaches you how to do something. Seminar. Uh, but it's called... Um, uh, uh, um, Professional development. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. A little help from my friend. So all of those things have to do with Scott's role as the president of the National Association of Agricultural Educators. And so as an agriculture teacher, you have avenues and pathways to become leaders. Is there anything you'd like to say about that, Scott? Quick. Do your best to get as much of an education as you can so that you can make as big an impact as you can. And if you are going to become an ag teacher, we need you in NAAE so that you can make a positive difference and we can provide you the resources to make you an even better teacher. Okay, so now the tables turn, and it's your turn to learn and see if you can understand a little bit about CHS and cooperative models. So, Dan, now you're in the driver's seat. Uh, this is a business structure that uh, CHS has. It is uh, a group of individuals coming together. Uh, this is uh, actually where CHS is headquartered, uh, the land of 10,000 lakes. Minnesota. Uh, this is uh, not domestic, but... So we, uh, as a company, we market Foreign? products. Uh, yes, we market products all over the world. Uh, when you market products uh, outside the United States, it's a blank market. Global. Another word for global? Uh, international. Uh, this is a act of uh, providing uh, funding and support to Grants. an organization. Uh, it, uh, it helps you to be a um, uh, strong, uh, in the case of CHS, a corporate citizen, it's a term we use for giving. Um, it, it Donor. Uh, next one. Stewardship. <laughs> Stewardship. Uh, this is what uh, CHS announced today to teach AG and National FFA. It was in the form of a... Grant. Great. So as we said um, earlier, if you were able to join us, uh, CHS announced a very significant gift in, in addition to the gifts that they have given over the past years to agriculture and agricultural education. So I'd like Mr. Dan Mack to talk a little bit about CHS and some of the things that they have going on. Yeah, CHS uh, you know, feels it's a, it's a responsibility and obligation uh, to be able to make sure that we have uh, the future of agriculture is bright, the future of agriculture has uh, a lot of individuals that are interested, have passion around uh, the willingness to participate, uh, the willingness to, to do things in their career that feed the world, that educate people. And so I'm very proud to be part of an organization that feels that way and provides uh, the necessary support to organizations like Teach Ag and FFA uh, as, as, a, as a core platform. And uh, one bit of advice I'd have is learn your geography. Good advice. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Scott. All right, and next up for our celebrities, we have Mr. Chuck Benson from BASF. Woo, woo, woo! And Miss Samantha Kawaji Mioli from the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. Woo! And two wonderful, amazing students. Okay, so we know the platform. You guys yeah, good? Yeah. We got this, right? Got this. Okay, so ladies first. So who has some? Yes, you. So you're gonna go stand behind Mr. Benson. Okay. So you got this? Yeah. 
Okay. Yes. <laughs> Record time. Okay, so she's going to be explaining things that are related to the Chicago High School of Ag Sciences, and Chuck will be explaining things that are related to BASF and the industry that he is involved in. Okay, go. Okay. All right, so here at the school, um, the students take this. Um, they get to break up into these and um, sort of devote their junior year and then Pathways. Senior. Yes. Um, this is the state that we're currently Illinois. in. Illinois. <laughs> uh, this is a CDE that my students participate in with um, cattle and sheep. Animal science. Uh, but CDE, uh, oh. uh, a career development event. Oh, it's uh, animal judging, um, livestock judging. Yes. Um, Are we this, uh, <laughs> Oh, totally. Um, this is actually something that we just had at our school um, in the last month. Um, we used vegetables um, here um, off of the farm. A farm market, a and and brought them inside and fed them um, to the local community. Um, a dinner. Yes. A. We took it from the the fields. We took it from the uh, f farm to fork. Um, and we sat at a a table. A dinner table. <laughs> a table for dinner. Kind of. We took the vegetables from the... The field. The farm to table. The farm to... <laughs> is it a farm to table? Yes. Is it farm to table? Yes. Um, so this. <laughs> uh, this is actually something that, that um, we have a product here. Um, we are fortunate to have bees in the area. And oh, honeybees. Uh, 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 the yes. well, beehive. Well, yes. well what, they, what they produce, yes. <laughs> it's hard to match his enthusiasm. Like, did you see him like he was in? He was all I'm in and try. This. Okay, so Boy. now we're going to learn about BASF, and Samantha's going to try to guess. I wish so. I had those. <laughs> um, BSF makes a lot of these. There's probably a class in high school where you might take an acid and a base. It's this kind of chemicals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is where we're based. Go Tar Heels. Um, UNC Tar Heels. It's uh, um, there's a south one of these and a north one. Dakota. Uh, Carolina. We're in the south. Yeah. Would you say South Carolina? The other one. The better. North one. Carolina. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. This. Uh, um, we're very interested in, in um, trying to increase the population of these. Um, they're a Lepidoptera. I a, feel like I should know that. A this monarch is, is one. A butterfly. Yes. Okay, this is, um, um, if, if you want to keep the, um, the land strong, you want it to go on for generations and generations, um, you're very concerned about... Resources? Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's... Um, you want the environment. To, it, it, sort of. It, it, you want to take care of the environment, and it's a way you take care of the environment. It might... Uh, uh, sustainability. That's it. That's it. Well done. A final one is oh, um, we're very... Um, we, we love investing in young people, and so one of the ways we do this is a lot of times in the summer, college kids might be trying to get one of interns? these. Interns? That's a it. Or internship? That's it. Nice. Yeah. Did we win? Did Oh, you win. Yeah, you'll get your prize. They'll be mailed. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> so I appreciate that. So um, we're going to be hearing a little bit more from BASF later today with some exciting news that they have for um, agricultural education. But I'd like Mr. Chuck Benson to talk about um, BASF and some of their commitment and, and who they are. Okay. Um, uh, Chuck Benson. I'm with uh, BASF Corporation. We're a 150-year-old uh, company um, focused in chemistry. And... Uh, for 100 years, we've been focused in agriculture. In fact, about 100 years ago, uh, we were the company that created the way that we synthesize fertilizer. The same way we synthesize fertilizer today, we invented that process 100 years ago. And the reason something like that's important is because um, without synthetic fertilizer, this planet sustains about 4 billion people. And I just looked on my phone before I came up here. We're at 7.5 billion and counting. And so we've been focused on innovation for 100 years. We're probably the quietest, most innovative company out there in the agricultural sphere. You know, we've in introduced more active ingredients into this ag chemical um, area in the, uh, the last 10 years than any other companies. But, but the reason we do it is because we're excited about 
being able to invest in the next generation of agriculture. And it's one of the reasons why we're excited to be part of an organization like this. Actually, um, before I uh, came out here, I just took a quick, that's a receipt. I, I took a quick round. Um, I just stepped out of my office, you know, because I, I, I grew up in DeKalb. I lived in um, North Carolina, my adopted state, for the last 20 years. Um, so a shout out to um, the schools like North Carolina, Carolina State, Mount Olive, NCANT, great ag ed programs there. But when I look outside my office, so my ag teacher was, was Mr. Kuntz and Mr. Sharpie in DeKalb, Illinois. But then I went to uh, Jason Kuhlmeyer, you know, who was a state officer in Illinois a few years ago. Um, and his was Mr. Peterson in Pearl City, Illinois. I went to Colby Mower, who's in our communication group and, you know, supports a lot of our communications efforts. His was Mr. Allen out of North San Pete in, in Utah. I went to Scott, Kuhlma, I mean, Scott uh, K, who runs our U.S. crop business. And, uh, um, you know, his teacher was Mr. Jonk out of Atlantic, Iowa. Scott Stout runs our fungicide business, and, and his was Mr. Price and Mr. Gawk out of Tipton, Indiana. And I even went to one of our new hires, sits right outside my office, his name's Hunter, and his was Mrs., uh, Miss Blaha and Mrs. Alexander out of uh, Dimwitty, Virginia. I'm like, that, that was just stepping outside my office. And so I just want to say thanks for everybody and all of your commitment. Thanks. So tough, again, another tough act to follow, but I have no doubt that our next two celebrities will be able to knock the socks off of us. So Ms. PJ Simon, who is with Dow DuPont, and Mr. Bradley Coleman, who is agriculture teacher at Ponchatoula High School in Louisiana. And so they're going to learn a little bit about each other. Can't wait um, for some Cajun terms here, possibly. And then also um, some of our du Dow DuPont. Uh, terms. So let's go ahead and obviously um, ladies first. So we're going to start with Ms. PJ Simon and so Bradley is going to try to guess terms related to some of the things that Dow DuPont does. Got it. Okay. You guys need to switch. There oh, well go. now she knows my first one. <laughs> she, she wouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. Girl. Yep, so you gotta. Oh, oh describe, okay. Yes. Plant science. Uh, you gotta Plant help me out a little genetics. more. <laughs> Plant genetics. Um, it's number one career for Biotechnology. Us. Um, uh, the study of plants. Oh, um, horticulture? Begins, <laughs> begins with an A as uh, in oh, egg. Uh, agronomy, agronomy. <laughs> yes! Pioneer Hybrid is headquartered in a place, <laughs> <laughs> a city, a state. A state. You're in a state. Okay. Currently, Illinois. I don't. <laughs> no, you have the first letter correct. Indiana. Uh, a state, um, and they have a, a Iowa. Yes. All right. Um, it's what we do when we you. You work the land. Till. Uh, it's a, along that line. It's mm. what you, we do with our your students. Uh, cultivate. Yeah. Ah. That was a good one. That um, was a good one. <laughs> I spent most of my time here. Uh, you don't know this. <laughs> okay. So, um, it's usually in corporate world. It's it, it it's the first word of before it precedes development. What do you do before you develop? You have to do your homework. Study. Uh -huh. Study in college. R &D. Yes. And it, R &D. You can't, can we say that? Oh, I can Okay. I, oh, um, I, I, here's a, a term paper is also known as a. <laughs> your study, a term paper is also known as a. You have to do this a lot in college. You have to do it a lot in um, college. Research. It's the back, yeah. Research okay. and development. Yes. Ah. It's um, a way of helping people. Uh, become successful in college, the financial part of... Oh, scholarships. Yes. Or scholarship. Yes. Okay, great. So now, now, PJ, right. you're going to learn a little bit about Louisiana Ag Ed. Okay. Or, well, we're going to see. Okay, yeah, we'll see. So, okay. here oh, we go. I, I still face this um, way. Yeah. Okay. All right. I teach at Punchville High School, which is in this state. 
not this state, but yeah. <laughs> Louisiana. Is, yes. All right. At our school, we have two of these. Uh, we grow plants in them, um, and it's temperature and climate control. Greenhouse. Greenhouse. Yes. Um, the president of FFA will use this, um, and different taps mean different things. Gaff, gavel? Correct. Uh -huh. um, in FFA, we wear a blue, a blue what type of jacket? Was corduroy. it? What's the, yes, okay. corduroy. And, oh, wow, uh, I have one of these in my classroom. It's um, the newest piece of technology that's kind of replaced the projector. It's a piece of technology that's very oh, intelligent. The, oh, oh um, the, a whiteboard? It, yeah. an, but another word for intelligent. Okay. Very... Sensory? I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Smart boards. Smart yes, boards there you go. I'm sorry. No, that's it. That's all we got. <laughs> <laughs> So our friends at Dow DuPont have been amazing supporters of agricultural education um, through a number of teacher investment programs. So I'd like PJ to share a, a few minutes worth of some of the things that are going on and, and a little bit about Dow DuPont. I have to say that, um, and you may be familiar with this book, and as I thought about Teach Ag Day, it's a national holiday for me, and I get so excited. And I thought about our future and the wonderful uh, teachers and the students that you will engage in. And you may have heard of this book. It's called, Oh, the Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own. You know what you know. And you are the guy or the gal who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some you'll say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your feet and your shoes full of feet, you're much too smart to go down just any not so good street. DuPont Pioneer is the world's largest developer and supplier of advanced plant genetics. We provide seeds to farmers around the world. Pioneer combines conventional plant breeding biotechnology, and emerging areas in science with unsurpassed service and support. We deliver solutions to help farmers increase their yields to meet the food demands of this ever-growing population. Most of you already know us. We operate in 90 different countries. And yes, it is a great place to work. But did you know that there is a place at our table, behind a desk, in the laboratory, and or in the field for the, stu for the students that you will teach? The world is counting on our teachers. We are counting on our teachers. We're counting on you to prepare your students, our children, so that they can choose a great path down a good street and into a rewarding career in agriculture. My advice to you is, as I say to all teachers, teach them well. All right, so thank you, PJ. Little, you know, side conversations, secrets. 
So I'd like to welcome up now our final pair to, to blow us out of the water, Mr. Kelly Manning from Growth Energy and Ms. Jessie Lumpkins back up to the stage. And so Jessie's going to see what Kelly knows about McGavick and Tennessee agricultural education. And Jessie is going to see what she knows about ethanol and biofuels. Oh, no. So... <laughs> Here we go. We'll make it simple. Okay. So Jesse's gonna Jesse's gonna kick us off. Okay. The best state in the union. Tennessee. Yes. <laughs> Try star for life. Um, okay. This is what people think I have, and it looks like this. It's not an alpaca because that's what we have, but the other word for it. Um, uh, it's a camelid, a and they're tall. An emu. <laughs> they're tall. And they have a long uh, neck, and they're got fiber. Yes. Um, this is what I collect, and can I cheat? It's one of these. Tattoo. Uh, 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 owl. An owl. <laughs> um. This is one of the methods that we bring uh, information to students. So if they are questioning, they're going through it, and it's something based. Um, if we're not feeding based. it to them, okay, that's true. Uh, research yes. based. Okay, more. So if they ask a question, if I need to ask a question, I can also look it up, yeah, so <laughs> in investigate. Okay, inform. it also starts with an I, and there's a Q in there. Inquisitive? Uh, inquiry. I think that counts. Inquiry? Good. We're winning. Yay. <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh, my school, my um, agri-science teachers are really good at this. They hold a big fair where their students research a lot Fundraising? of Fundraising? <laughs> Informing I students? I said both words. <laughs> you don't know that. How did though. I not get it? Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, I can see it. Agri-science fair. <laughs> agri-science fair. Yep, there you go. <laughs> oh, well, we already won. See? That's how great we were at that one. <laughs> All right. Wow. <laughs> Looks a lot easier yeah, down I know. there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so Ready? here we go. Now Miss Jessie's going to see if she what she can learn about ethanol, or or one of the terms that one of the words that might be in there. We'll make the first one easy. Ellen said it. Ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even see it. My home state. It's home of Mount Rushmore and the the Corn Palace. South Dakota. Correct. Yes. Uh, Dale Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon. NASCAR. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, biofuels are good for the blank. Uh, environment. Correct. Yes, I'm killing it. A Zach Brown song. Chicken fries. Same thing we make. <laughs> Toes in the sand. <laughs> Our product is produced here. You maybe have a garden. Cornfield. <laughs> a Zach Brown song. More I, recent. I, I don't know. Let's go to Chris garden. Stapleton. What are you putting in a garden? <laughs> Soil. What are you doing? Uh, tilling it. Uh, cultivating it. Taking care of it. What am I putting in my backyard? What does that mean? A Zach Brown song. To plant Relate something. It. I don't Oh, his song. <laughs> That's about all I know. <laughs> oh, homegrown. That's, yeah. Got it. Sorry. Sorry. I know. <laughs> the, on such a roll. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully this is a little bit of an entertaining way to learn about um, each other and about some of the things related to ag education and our amazing sponsors. So. Ethanol biofuels industry is a huge industry and very important to agriculture. So I'd like Mr. Kelly Manning to talk a little bit about growth energy and the things that they do. Well, in the theme of the shout out, shout out to all the ag teachers. So thank you for all you do. A special shout out to those ag teachers who teach their students about biofuels because it is an American success story. And a lot of people don't know that. So Growth Energy was formed a few years back to kind of tell that story and show the consumers how we save them money at the pump, how we're better for the environment, and how we are a homegrown fuel that lessens our dependence on foreign oil. And we're produced right in the heartland. We're used, we, today we utilize corn, we use the starch from the corn, and we actually take the protein and micronutrients, we put them back into the feed supply. So we're, we had, these plants are fantastic. If you have not visited one and you're a teacher with students out there, please call us up. We'll love to give you a tour. And uh, it's a fantastic industry. We thank Ellen and everyone here uh, with this group. And uh, we're proud to be a part of it. Ag teachers do a lot for our, our industry and uh, for the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So you can see why our ag teachers and why the supporters that make ag, the National Teach Ag campaign possible are indeed our celebrities here today. So um, one of the things I mentioned earlier is we have a number of individuals out there who are going to be future ag teachers and created some super fun videos and sent us in their pictures. So let's meet some more.
is the adventure of a lifetime because you get to make a positive impact on future generations. Because you do something different every day. I'm going to get to go into the classroom where I'll impact students' lives. And I'm going to create the next generation of agriculture enthusiasts. Students who will wear a lot of hats from being a mentor to an advocate for agriculture. We are Penn State DJ! Woo! So I'm really excited to have those individuals join us in their own unique way. Earlier we heard from Jessie sharing her story of being an agriculture teacher. I'd like you now to, to meet a, a really unique and interesting um, background and story, Miss Samantha Kujawa Muli. So she is the agriculture teacher here at Chicago High School of Ag Sciences. It's her second year of teaching agriculture. She came through um, ag industry and is alternatively certified. And so those of you that I talked to earlier, so we have our students who are going through the Ag Ed degree program, but we also have agriculture teachers who went out and got business and industry and, and that kind of experience and then decided that teaching agriculture was right for them. So we want to, you to know that if you have a passion for students and a passion for agriculture, there's a place for you in Ag Ed. So please welcome Ms. Samantha. Hi there, good afternoon. Um, like Ellen said, uh, my name is Samantha, and um, I, before coming to this school um, my freshman year, I didn't really know a lot about agriculture. Um, I was definitely into animals um, and knew a lot about them, but that was pretty much it. Um, and so my first opportunity being introduced to it was actually here at this high school. Um, I went through the animal science pathway, um, and it basically um, got me thinking about all of the opportunities that are available um, for me in this industry. And so after I graduated here, I, I continued on. I went to Western Illinois, um, and I minored in animal science. And after that, I stayed in um, the animal science field. I um, worked at a vet office for several years. Um, I worked at several animal shelters. Um, I was also a zoologist for um, several years at the Peoria Zoo. Um, and finally, um, I worked and lived on a farm down in Springfield for over five years. And um, the opportunity came about, um, a position came up here back at the school to teach animal science. Um, and what better way to go full circle than to come back to the very really very room that I sat in, except I was on the other side. So I now get to teach my students everything that I learned, um, not only when I was in high school, but then continuing on through the, um, the industry. And so um, it's been really amazing. Um, I like to give a shout out to my animal science class, my juniors and seniors. Um, hopefully they're watching. Um, but it's truly amazing um, getting to go back and teach them and see light bulbs going off and sharing experiences with them that I've had the opportunity to have not only when I was in school here, um, but then also out in the real world. Um, and so I would say, um, had you asked me when I was younger if I ever thought I was going to teach, the answer would have been no. Um, but now that I've had the opportunity to do it, um, I don't think that I would have, would have chosen any other career. Um, it really is a great opportunity and truly inspiring to be able to teach young students about animals and about the agriculture field and how it's something that we're always going to have um, no matter what happens going forward. So thank you very much. Man, ag teachers are the best. 
So um, thank you, Samantha, and appreciate all of the ag teachers who are doing amazing things in their classroom every day to ensure that students are successful, and more importantly, that they have a safe, welcome environment uh, to, to be in. So I appreciate that. One of the things that we've done over the past of four or five years is recognize individuals and groups and organizations who have gone above and beyond um, to really take the Teach Ag message to the masses, been very big supporters, and so we call them our Teach Ag champions. And so this year we're going to recognize two of those individuals, or two, one, an individual and a group who have, again, over the past year done amazing things. So let's meet them. Each year, the National Teach Ag Campaign formally recognizes individuals and organizations who work to address the national demand for agriculture teachers as Teach Ag Champions. This year's Teach Ag Champions were selected based upon their exceptional commitment in identifying the needs of their states and implementing effective strategies to recruit and retain high quality and diverse agriculture teachers. The 2017 National Teach Ag Champions are the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation and Dr. Jeremy Folk, Associate Professor for Agriculture and Extension Education at the University of Idaho. With more than 61,000 members, the Nebraska Farm Bureau is a grassroots farm organization that works for the benefit of all Nebraskans through a wide variety of educational, service, and advocacy focused on their mission of helping farm and ranch families prosper and improving their quality of life. The Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation has been working alongside Nebraska Team Ag Ed since 2014. As part of their commitment to agricultural education in Nebraska, the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation has pioneered two scholarship programs that focus on the recruitment and retention of high quality and diverse agriculture teachers. The first scholarship program is for current agricultural education majors at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and the other is for Nebraska agriculture teachers in their first through fifth year of teaching, which helps pay off their student loans. Alex Cunningham, a fall 2016 recipient of the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation's pre-service teacher scholarship, said that the scholarship allowed her to participate in extra educational experiences with her students, such as attending the National FFA Convention and Expo. These experiences allowed her to get to know her students better and helped her see what makes a difference in their lives outside of the classroom. The scholarship programs started in Nebraska have inspired other states to develop similar partnerships as well. Additionally, the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation is a premier sponsor of the Nebraska FFA Foundation, providing financial support to over 8,000 agricultural education students across the state of Nebraska. Our next 2017 Teach Ag Champion is Dr. Jeremy Folk who is an Associate Professor for Agriculture and Extension Education at the University of Idaho in Moscow, Idaho. After working as a high school agriculture teacher at Federal Hocking High School in Ohio for four years, he returned to his alma mater, The Ohio State University, to complete a master's degree and PhD in agricultural education. He has worked for the University of Idaho since 2011. Dr. Folk was selected as a Teach Ag Champion for his dedication at both the state and national level to address the demand for agriculture teachers. He developed an agriculture teacher trading card activity that is currently being used across the country to help recruit and retain agriculture teachers, while allowing teachers to tell their Teach Ag story to students and others through their cards. The trading card activity also served as the inspiration for the National Teach Ag Campaign booth at the 2016 National FFA Convention and Expo. Dr. Falk also started and coordinates the Region 1 National Association of Agricultural Educators Pre-Service Agriculture Teacher Track, a professional development opportunity for student teachers in the Northwest region of the country to network and reflect on their student teaching experience. He also serves as a valuable asset to the National Teach Ag Campaign as an advisory board member, providing forward-thinking and innovative ideas. 
We'd again like to thank our 2017 Teach Ag Champions, the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation, and Dr. Jeremy Folk of the University of Idaho, as well as our past Teach Ag Champions for their continued commitment to raising awareness of the need to recruit and retain high quality and diverse agriculture teachers. It is thanks to individuals and partnering organizations like these and our sponsors, the CHS Foundation, DuPont Pioneer, Growth Energy, and BASF that help make the work of the National Teach Ag Campaign possible. Congratulations to the Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation and Dr. Jeremy Falk. I know that they are having a, a watch party right now at the University of Idaho, so hello to you and congratulations to your um, professor, and then also hello Nebraska Farm Bureau Foundation, I know you're also, and Dr. Falk, because he's you know a champion, is also hosting later today an after party on online for agricultural education majors, so a champion's in true sense of the word. So I'd like you now to bring back up on stage Mr. Scott Stone from Centralia High School in Missouri, and he's going to share with you his inspiring Teach Ag story. Um, as I said, NAA current president, um, leader of agricultural education, and has done amazing things. So please come on up. Thank you very much, Ellen. Well, I can tell you guys, I am definitely missing my classroom, and in my classroom, I teach for 90 minutes. So sit back and relax. Here we go. Okay, I'm just kidding, but I do miss my classroom. Um, today has been an awesome celebration of ag teachers across this country, and I want to thank our sponsors, CHS Foundation, BAS, BASF, DuPont, and Pioneer, as well as um, Growth Energy for supporting us. We want to thank the National Council for Agriculture Education for making this possible, as well as the National FFA Foundation for going out and making this work. Now, as an agriculture teacher, I want to tell you a little bit about the past couple days. Saturday morning, I woke up early and went and helped a student fix a fence because the sow, which is his SAE project, kept getting out. After we got the sow contained, I jumped on a bus and took 23 students to a trap shoot. After the trap shoot, we came back home and then jumped on a lawnmower because my students are helping elderly individuals in our community mow their lawn who aren't able to. Sunday, I got up and went to church with the family and then had a family dinner. Quickly after family dinner, I pulled out my grade book and started grading some tests, and then I entered grades because grades were due. Uh, some students aren't having such a great day today because they went out yesterday. Um, and then, after I graded the or put the grades in, I sat down and wrote lesson plans for the week. Monday, I got up and went to school, and I taught four classes. We learned about everything from domestication to plant science. After school, I worked with some students who were writing speeches. And that evening, I had the opportunity to go and watch several of my students play football, as well as cheer on the football team. And then Tuesday, I got up and went to school, taught four classes. Then that night, I got to spend about four hours with fellow ag teachers from across our area in professional development. And then after I got done, I wrote sub plans. Wednesday morning, I got up, went to school, and watered the 600 poinsettias that my students are growing, and then drove yesterday to Chicago. Now, some people in my community often say I'm the busiest man around. Why would I ever take a job where I'm that busy all the time? And my answer is very simple. It's Dallas, Lindsay, Zane, and Mary Kate, who knew nothing about poultry other than the fact that they liked chicken nuggets before we started our poultry unit and went on to place 12th in the state in the career development event. It's Rodney, who dropped out of high school because he was homeless but took the skills he learned in our ag class before he dropped out to make a successful career for himself. It's Garrett, who at the age of 15, runs a, or a cattle fitting operation, as well as raises cattle for other people. It's Lewis, whose dad died his sophomore year, and he says to this day the only reason he stayed in school was because of his ag classes. It's for Braden, who went on to be a successful welder. It's for Neil, who was afraid to talk to anybody his freshman year, who is now a renowned reproductive physiology veterinarian in the United States. Now, it's also for Mitch, Mary, Kate, or Kendra, and Melanie, who teach ag in the state of Missouri every day. And it's for Kelsey, who's an ag ed student at the University of Oklahoma, who wants to come back and take my job, and she tells me that regularly. You know, there are over 
7,700 ag programs in this country and over 12,000 ag teachers who go to work every day. But last year, we closed 73 programs in the United States because there was not a highly qualified ag teacher to take their place. Now, I'm here to tell you at those schools, there are Zanes, Dallas's, Mary Kate's, Anna's, who will never get the experience of sitting in an agriculture education classroom. They will never have the opportunity to develop a supervised agriculture experience. And they'll never know the feeling of pulling on that blue corduroy jacket for the first time. So I ask you this, those of you who are in the audience as well as those of you who are here, are you willing to go back home and teach the Bradens and the Garretts and the Mary Kates and the Lindsays? Are you willing to make that commitment? Can we count on you to raise the next generation of ag students in our country? I hope the answer is yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott, and I'm sure that your students are having a great time watching you um, in your classroom today. Uh, so one of the things that you've seen in the videos are the, the, in the videos are the videos from institutions. And so it's a bit of a contest. And one of the things that, that how we judge the contest is by views on YouTube. And so the videos went live on Saturday night. And so we've been collecting and counting views until then. And so we're gonna announce the, the winner here in just a little bit. But I can tell you right now that the, um, that the count is Per, or Washington State University, who is last year's champion, is currently leading with 2,009 views, followed closely by Purdue with 1965, and then the University of Kentucky. So we've got about 10 more minutes to get those views up to take home the, the prize trophy and all of the bragging rights that go with that over the next year as an institution. So um, I know that's really important in college. Um, bragging rights. So um, the next thing that we're going to do is um, hear a little bit from Elissa. Um, what's going on on social media real quick? Absolutely. Those hashtag tagged 17 posts keep rolling in. At Miss Bloom's class says happy hashtag teach ag day at Ness Ag Ed. And at Kissia Jean says happy national teach ag day friends. I am forever thankful for my opportunity to take part in this profession. Hashtag tagged 17. And let's meet some more of those future agriculture teachers and see more of those commercials that are competing for these trophies. Somebody to someone And if the sun starts set and the sky goes cold And if the clouds get heavy and start to fall I really need somebody to call my own I want to be somebody to someone Someone to you Someone to you Someone to you Someone to you Your heart has to be followed Whoa, oh, oh, oh. teaching ag is a good career. Well, they're wrong. Teaching ag is the best career. As an ag ed student, I'm often asked, what's so great about teaching ag? What do I tell them? It's the adventure of a lifetime. Teach Arkansas, teach ag. Okay. 
So you can see there's a lot of talent out there that we're going to be able to harness very soon. I'll tell you, when she put her hand up when I first saw that and then it had the TCHAG logo, there's really nothing that gets me more excited than seeing the TCHAG logo used in places. And so that one really got to me. I really enjoyed that one. So um, Elissa is going to give us another update on some of the things that are going on out there in social media. Yes. Brian Davis says, happy National Teach Ag Day to all UCPS agriculture teachers. Thank you for all you do. West Rowan FFA says, forever grateful for the advisors who influence our lives. Hashtag Teach Ag. Amanda Gain says, today is National Teach Ag Day. We are tagged to teach the next generation of leaders, educate consumers, and apply content knowledge from other areas to agriculture. ACEL at Ohio State University shares a quote from Micah Mensing that says, I'm pursuing agri-science education to assist the next generation with finding their passion within our incredible industry. Colt Beckenruth says, happy National Teach Ag Day. Thanks, for, thanks to our rocking Kenton FFA agricultural education instructor, Mrs. Logan, for all you do. And finally, at Val Oswald says, proud of my husband, Paul Oswald, for his years of teaching agriculture. He is a positive role model to many. Hashtag teach ag, hashtag tagged 17. Palpate a cow barehanded or in bit of compost bins? Hmm. Gonna have to go with palpate and cow. Would you rather? Man, my job is so boring. I believe in American agriculture. I will endeavor to develop professionally through study, travel, and exploration. Teaching agriculture is an adventure of a lifetime. So I think not only do we have some future amazing, creative, awesome agriculture teachers, I think we have some great ag journalism and ag communication specialists out there. Um, we had the chance earlier to meet Mr. Bradley Coleman when he and PJ were up here doing theirs. I'd now like to introduce you to him to you as well and have him give you a little bit more about his Teach Ag story and inspiring others to teach agriculture. Um, I've known Bradley for about four or five years. He was a Teach Ag ambassador when he was going to school at Louisiana State and now it's so powerful to be able to see him making a difference in the program that he has in Ponchatoula. So Mr. Bradley Coleman. Thank you so much, Ellen, and the National Teach Ag campaign, as well as everybody else for having me here today. The first line of the Ag Teacher's Creed states, I'm an agricultural educator by choice and not by chance. I'd like to highlight that word with you today, choice. Why do we choose to be an ag teacher? So I asked, I asked ag teachers from all across the nation, why did you choose to be an ag teacher and what's your favorite part? I'm happy to share some of, your, some of their responses with you today. Sarah Dyson, ag teacher in Louisiana, said she chose 
to be an agriculture teacher because she knew firsthand the positive difference that ag teachers can make in the lives of their students, and she loves watching her students enjoy learning every day. My friend Whitney Barnes from Wisconsin says that she chooses to teach agriculture because she loves getting to learn something new every single day. Amy Hartman, ag teacher in Texas, says that she chooses to teach agriculture because she loves helping students find their place that they can be successful. And agriculture teacher Allison Lewis in West Virginia chooses to teach agriculture because she knows that ag teachers have an opportunity to make learning meaningful and fun. And she wanted to be able to do that for her students just like her ag teachers got to do for her. My ag teacher, the late Alice Dubois, once told me something that I'll never forget. She told me, live all in. Make every second of your life count. By choosing to teach ag as a career, I get to do that every single day. You see, when we choose to teach agriculture as a career, it means a lot of different things. It means waking up every day and wanting to go to work. Choosing to teach agriculture as a career means that you play a huge role in securing the next generation of agriculturalists. It means a lot of hard work, sweat, and determination. Choosing to teach agriculture means hauling livestock, testing soil, planting seeds, CDE practices, SAE visits, and a whole lot more. It means traveling with students to livestock shows, county fairs, and spending a lot of hours fundraising. But it also means getting to take students to FFA events, teaching a student for the first time how to tie that tie or wear that scarf with official FFA dress. It means getting to say things like, I believe in the future of agriculture, and here, by the owl. Choosing to teach agriculture means you get to teach those important life lessons, like how to win gracefully and how to lose gracefully as well by saying, it's all right, we'll get them next time. I'm an agriculture teacher because it is the best job in the world. I'm an agriculture teacher because it matters. I'm an agriculture teacher by choice and not by chance. And you could be too. Thank you. So I think we had four pretty great teachers that are representative of the 12,000 that are out there um, doing all of the things that Jesse and Samantha and Scott and Bradley so eloquently shared with us today. So I really appreciate them being here because they're not in their classrooms today. And any teacher will tell you, it is way harder to plan for a sub than to um, you know, take the time to go and do these things, but they know and they value how important it is to inspire the next generation to teach ag. So thank you to the four of them and to all of the ag teachers out there. Um, so we're, we're getting close to kind of the, the end of today, some of today's festivities. We're gonna keep rolling things here, but it's time to start thinking about 2018. So if you've not made your New Year's Eve plans for 2017, now might be a good time to make those reservations. But in Teach Ag World, we, like, we need to start thinking about where we're going to have National Teach Ag Day 2018. And we don't have to think anymore because we have a wonderful spot to be able to celebrate this next year. So I'd like to bring up Miss PJ Simon for a very um, quick and awesome announcement that's so hot off the press that we didn't even have time to really get it into the official program. And then um, Miss Natalie Bryant will be joining her momentarily to talk a little bit about 2018 Teach Ag Day. So. Over to you. Sorry, back again. Diversity and inclusion in agriculture is very near and dear to me. Uh, you may think of it as a societal issue. Others consider it a business imperative, while others say that it's just the right thing to do. Research shows that diversity and inclusion increases creativity and innovation. It promotes higher quality decisions, and enhances economic growth. The Thurgood Marshall College Fund represents 47 historically black colleges and universities. In honor of Teach Ag Day, DuPont is pleased to announce a partnership with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund and the establishment of the DuPont Agricultural Education Teacher 
quality retention program fellows. This participation, through this participation, uh, our ag education fellows will be trained and supported through the critical first three years of their careers as well as their education. They will also receive the critical financial and pedagogical wraparound support needed to ensure their persistent in both their career and their education. I hope that you will welcome this opportunity. I, I extend an opportunity to the other organizations that are here to join us in this effort as we talk about teaching ag and we also encourage all of our teachers to teach them well. Thank you. So it was PJ's 60th birthday about a week ago, and if anybody can throw a party, three outfit changes at her 60th birthday party. So um, if you're ever looking for somebody to have a good time with, there, there's a lady. And so speaking of good times, let's talk about 2018 National Teach Ag Day. I'd like to bring up Miss Natalie Bryant from DuPont Pioneer to share with us um, their news. Thank you all, glad to be here. It's been an exciting um, event and I'm always pleased to be here among egg teachers and it's um, been a joyful experience. Um, I wanted to share and I, I'm blessed to have this opportunity to share that um, as Pioneer is committed to supporting egg education, um, the 2018 Teach Ag Day will be at Pioneer's George Washington Carver Conference Center in Johnston, Iowa. <laughs> We're excited about that. Pioneer has a long tradition of supporting the recruitment and retention of ag teachers. Ag teachers work in the classroom, inspires future farmers, agronomists, scientists, and other ag experts. This next generation of ag leaders will discover innovative and sustainable ways to improve agricultural productivity for generations to come. We understand the vital role that ag teachers play. They are the first point of contact for students and they have an energy match opportunity to get the next generation excited and engaged in the agriculture experience. Um, at Pioneer, we are always looking for ways to get young people interested and enthused about agriculture careers, and we hope that many of these young people today that are students will consider roles of working at DuPont Pioneer. Thank you, and we'll look forward to see you in Johnston, Iowa in 2018. Absolutely. Yeah. Wonderful. Longtime supporters of agricultural education. So it's going to be a wonderful event there in exactly 365 days. So mark your calendars for September 20th, 2018. So um, lots of amazing things that we shared today. One of the things that I talked about a few minutes ago was the collegiate contest video. And I'm happy to report, well, I'm happy just to provide the information. I don't care who wins. Um, but the trophy is going right back where it came from. It's going back to Washington State University. Congratulations to them. They had 2,077 views. <laughs> Purdue, you were at 2013. 50 more. 50. But you're here, so there's a lot to that. So we appreciate Purdue being here, appreciate Michigan State being here. So now what I'd like to do is bring it back to Dr. Jackman, where we started about two hours ago. Can you believe it's already been a couple of hours? It has gone very quickly for um, another special announcement. Hey, just before that, can I um, just get everyone to, uh, to agree with me that Ellen and Andrea and Tori and Elisa and Julie and I'm probably missing somebody but all the NAA staff have done a great job with this event. What do you think? Thank you. So on many occasions we've said how important our sponsors are to events such as the Teach Ag campaign and everything that we do at NAAE and throughout that school-based agricultural education um, uh, arena 
And we're very excited today to have an opportunity to announce a brand new sponsor for the National Teach Ag Campaign. Not a new sponsor uh, from the, for, the, from, for the FFA Foundation and, and school-based agricultural education, but a new sponsor to the campaign. And as P.J. Simon a moment ago talked specifically about diversity and inclusion in agricultural education, this sponsorship is allowing us to take a very specific look at diversity and inclusion in ag ed and that's something that we so desperately need. And so I'm very pleased to announce the brand newest sponsor to the National Teach Ag campaign is our friends that you've already met from BASF. And so we're so excited to add them to our family with the Teach Ag campaign and Molly is going to come forward now and say a little bit more about that and introduce them and have the announcement of their brand new sponsorship. Here's Molly. Thanks. So this is really exciting. Um, BASF has been a sponsor of FFA for more than 60 years. And 60 years is a very, very long time. FFA, the foundation, has only been around for about 74 years. So we're very, very pleased that BASF has been with us for that long. As uh, Jay said, they're building on what we are focused on in ag education and FFA, which is diversity and inclusion, as PJ mentioned. And so really having that, those dollars to be able to focus um, on how we build a broader base of our teach ag agricultural education instructors in classrooms on the country is critical. Um, I heard a statistic that uh, the incoming kindergartners for this year into classrooms we're 30%, 30% in uh, Hispanic um, backgrounds. And so we need to build diverse classrooms and inclusive classrooms so that our ag teachers and our students have the opportunity to embrace agricultural education. So thank you to BASF and I, I thank all of our sponsors. So they join with us with DuPont Pioneer, they join CHS, uh, as you heard this morning again, Growth Energy, Red Brand, um, to be uh, inaugur another inaugural sponsor of Teach Ag. So we appreciate it so much. We can do so, so, so much. We cannot do, uh, we at Ag Ed Family, FFA, and uh, um, NAAE cannot do what we do today or in the future without the support of our sponsors. So thank you, uh, BASF. And with that, I'll invite Chuck Benson up to, to talk a little bit more about their sponsorship. It, it was a year ago. Um, we went to the FFA Foundation, and I think like a lot of sponsors, we're always wondering what more can we do. I mean, we, we love being able to give back to this industry that we're a part of, and uh, so we just sat around and we said, what, what else can we support? And they started to explain Teach Ag, and it might have been the easiest yes we've ever said. Um, so we are so glad to be part as the newest sponsor of Teach Ag, and we look forward to this being a, um, um, a long ongoing engagement with this uh, Really great group, great uh, um, students out there, you know, whether they're in high school or, or college. Um, we just love being part of what everyone is doing here. So again, thank you very much on behalf of BSF. So I think I'm also supposed to say it's $50,000 a year <laughs> moving forward. So thank you very much. Okay, so a couple of final 
social media things, and then then you'll see what's next. Yes. So our last social media shout outs. Um, Luke Allen says, shout out to my inspiration at Mindy McDermott, who hashtag tagged 17 me to teach ag. Kelly Claffin says, glad to see hashtag tagged 17 giving a shout out to alternatively certified ag teachers. You can choose to be an ag teacher at any stage. Oregon FFA says, hashtag why teach ag? Agriculture teachers use their passion to help students discover what they truly care about. And finally, Emily Do Dory says, to my ag teachers, thank you for forming me into the person I am today. Each late night spent in the ag room, fun memory, and each experience you took us on transformed every single one of your students. Your time, talents, and treasures are forever valued. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you to um, Elissa Russ, who has been the National Teach Ag Campaign intern since May. I wanna thank Tyler D'Angelo and Jordan Johns, who did our Facebook Live earlier, and Alan Green, who's been running the live tweeting and some of the other stuff that's been going on. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about some of our appreciation to some other folks as we begin to wrap up the day. So here's what's gonna happen now. So you are gonna have an amazing opportunity to see some of the brightest and best students potentially in the world share with you what they do every day on a daily basis here through the leadership of the agriculture teachers at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences. I, I cannot overstate how amazing it is to be here and to see what they're able to do in the program and with the students. It's incredible. So we're going to have this kind of crazy transition period where they're gonna come up here and they're gonna bring a bunch of stuff from all the, the pathways that they're part of. And we're gonna keep rolling during it because I always think it's cool to see what's happening in the room where it happens. Who are my Hamilton fans? In the room where it happens. Going, I'm going on Friday night. So, um, so we're gonna keep the camera rolling. It'll be about five minutes of getting stuff on the stage. Um, they're gonna get ready to roll and then I'm gonna turn it over to them and you're gonna be wowed and you're gonna be amazed and you're all gonna wanna enroll here but as you heard Dr. Mr. Hook say, not everybody can come here so start a program like this in your community or invest in the one that already exists. So quick transition time as they move on up here and then we'll be back about three o'clock to wrap things up.
Coming to you live from the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences, our seventh stop on our Ag Venturous tour across the nation with our show, Come, Come Be Ag Venturous with, with Daniel and Amy. Amy. So, Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences has been founded since 1985. This used to be a family farm, and so they sold it, but they were promised for agriculture wise. So I had the chance to talk with some of the students and I learned about the pathways. They get to choose a different pathway for their junior and senior year to focus on a field in agriculture. The pathways range from agricultural mechanics and technology, agricultural finance and economics, horticulture and landscape design, food science, animal science, and biotechnology. Today we're gonna hear from some of those students. Are we gonna bring them up today? Sounds great, let's get started. All right. Up first, we have Adam Villarreal from the Agricultural Careers and Leadership. Welcome, Adam. You can take a seat. So, Adam, tell me, how did you come to the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So, I was first exposed to this school in the fourth grade, and I realized that this school provides opportunities that no other school in the Chicago area does, and I feel like that's a very important skill that you're going to need later on in uh, the future. Sounds great. So I know you've only been here for a few weeks, but did you know anything about agriculture beforehand or did you come in kind of not knowing a lot? Um, I had a kind of a little like brief, you know, description of it. Uh, I wasn't too sure, but like again, it was kind of so-so. So, uh, I know you've only been here again for only a few, few weeks, but if you had to pick, which pathway would you go into? If I had to pick a pathway, I would maybe say horticulture because I'm into uh, plant science. So have you given any thought to what you want to do after high school? Uh, I probably want to pursue, uh, end up getting my PhD and uh, majoring in botany. Sounds great. So I know you have a presentation for us with your other colleagues, so let's head over there and get to learn more. Definitely. So who do we have with us today? Hi, my name is Andrea Beltran. Hi, nice, Hi, to, nice meet to meet you. I'm Layla Washington. Nice to meet you. So our demonstration is we're taking a generic goal and turning it into a SMART goal by the SMART goal process. So a SMART goal is an acronym for a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and trackable goal. So to make the goal specific, we would just, uh, the generic goal would be I want to achieve a high GPA by the end of the year. So to make it more specific, you would say that you want to achieve a 5.0 GPA. To make it measurable, you would say that one wants to achieve it, say, the end of your freshman year. <laughs> to make it achievable, one would say that they want to study, stay on top of their grades, and turn in like in-class assignments, homework, etc. And to make this more realistic, one, the student would have to be enrolled in honors classes and try to achieve the highest grades possible for those classes. And finally, to make it more time-focused, yeah, time-based and trackable, one would have to be able to check their progress online, the student portal, to see how their GPA and their grades are doing. So Daniel, do you have like a, a generic goal that we could turn into a SMART goal for you? Yeah, so I know a lot of students right now are applying to college, so why don't we make a generic goal applying to 10 schools? Okay, so to make that more specific, you would say you'd want to list the type of schools that you'd want to apply to, which, I don't know, it could be whatever you're interested, honestly. Um, to make it more measurable, you would say like three, four months before graduation, junior year, start applying. To make it achievable, you would have to stay on top of your class, like on top of your grades, make sure like you turn your assignments, especially if you're in an honors class or an AP class. To make it more realistic, one would be have, to be have to be enrolled in honors classes, AP, et cetera. And to make it trackable would be kind of the same thing as the original goal that we had, to be able to check your grades online. Sounds great. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It was really nice meeting you. Thank you, you too. Thank you so much for showing us the SMART goals. And up next is Michael Lehman in computer science. Hi, welcome to the show. So the first question is, why did you come to Ag? So basically I was kind of exposed to it by my parents because my mom ended up going to an agricultural school. She went to Lincoln Way West. So 
since about sixth, seventh, eighth grade, around there, every summer I'd come over here and look at the school, and I just thought it was a very unique school, being the only, being the only farm in Chicago. And since you're only a sophomore, what are some pathways that you're considering? Right now, I'm thinking either horticulture or ag finance. And why? Mostly because when we had, when we had our SAE over summer, freshman year, I did it with Miss Key, Miss Key for horticulture, and I just really liked the base of it and how it's crazy how you could just make plants in the back of your school. Great. So also, what's your favorite moment at Ag? My favorite moment was probably when we went to the state convention last year, mainly because we were able to go to Springfield, Illinois, and speak with many different schools about agriculture, and I got to meet many high up people in the FFA with all the state officers. It was just a very good time. All right, so you have a demonstration for us today? Yes. All right, let's go check it out. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Michael Lopitz. All right, and what are you demonstrating for us today? Um, I'm demonstrating basic parts of a computer. All right, and also, how does a computer relate to agriculture? A computer relates to agriculture because you can use a computer for diagnostics on machines, for help on animals trying to identify illnesses and sicknesses, and it can help count your crop increase or reduction based on certain variables. Also, also any ag teacher would need to keep data logs, so that also helps with the computer too. All right, let's get it started. Well, to start, here's a motherboard. The motherboard is one of the most important parts of a computer. The CPU here is the brain of the computer. And these are the motherboard connectors. They'll connect your motherboard to your hard drive and such. As we can see here, we have RAM sticks, three RAM sticks that are one gigabyte each, along with a graphics card. Graphics cards are used to display images. All right. uh, the graphics card would fit in on the back over here. The RAM would go into the RAM would go into these three black slots, and they'd hold it. Um, computers are very important in agriculture. They've helped for the past 50 years in agriculture and have made many advances even into studying GMOs. All right, thank you so much for this demonstration. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Patricia Tishy from the FFA. Welcome. Welcome, Patricia. So tell me, how did you get involved in the FFA? Um, before I became a, a freshman here, we hold a program called Freshman Connection here at the school. Um, we come for two weeks before the school year actually starts, and we have senior leaders. The senior leaders are um, the chapter officers here at the school, and we got exposed right away to um, what the FFA is, how it's all about, and um, being a freshman, you know, looking at all the clubs that I could possibly go into that really sparked my interest. Um, so I know you've only been on FFA for two years now. And I know uh, when I met with you this morning, you told me that you were the chapter president. So tell me a little bit about like your role as chapter president. Okay. Um, yes, this year I did become chapter president. Um, it's a really big year, obviously senior year. Um, we work with all the officers throughout the school. Um, we do um, more programs than I could ever think of. This summer we had a backyard harvest. Um, it focused on farm to table food. Um, we had alumni from the school come in and cook the meals in our food science lab um, to show us that you know, an agriculture student became a chef and then came in and applied those skills that they learned. So it was really interesting. 
So I know you're a senior, so do you have any thoughts for college and beyond? Um, that is the big question of the year. Um, I've been looking at U of I, College of Aces, since my freshman year. Um, they are big part, they're a big part of our school. I've been there numerous times. Um, I've been also been looking at Purdue, Michigan State. Um, those are real big schools that I've been looking at. Not too far, but far enough away that I can do my own thing. Well, thank you for coming on the show. It was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. I look forward to hearing from you. All right. Up next, we have Kai Dean in Animal Science. Hi. Welcome to the show. Hello. All right. First question. For Animal Science, why did you choose this pathway? I've always loved animals, and since I was like four, I've been wanting to figure out new and humane ways to care for animals and to fix any illnesses that they have, and that would not only benefit them, but also benefit us cost-wise. So are you thinking of majoring in animal science or anything in particular? Yes, it's marine biology and re animal rehabilitation. Oh, great. So what was your favorite moment at Ag or animal science? Well, just yesterday, we had our cow get her hoof trimmed. Um, she's a fish related cow, so basically the hoof trimmer came in with a portable squeeze machine or squeeze chute, and she was put in, and she got comfortable, and then she had her hoofs propped up on, each hoof propped up on his own um, stand, and he scraped everything out, that like all the manure and everything, clipped her hooves, and then put a eye, um, iodine and alcohol mix on to prevent any bacteria. So then I also heard when your pig was in labor, you had a live stream. Can you talk about that? Yes, so we had a live stream to uh, monitor the pig 24-7, and we had different students take different shifts um, to watch the pig, and if we, we were... Um, taught on the behaviors to look for in case she goes into labor. And each student had her shift, and if we would see anything, we would contact our teacher. And I remember it was like um, late at night that she started having her first um, piglet. And some students actually, along with our teacher, came in to help give birth to her. All right, so do you have a demonstration for us today? Yes, right over here. All right. All right, hi, what's your guys' names? Oh, I'm Jake. I'm Lisa Lascola, and we're seniors in the Animal Science Career Pathway. Do you want to come on the side? Okay, so as you can see here, we have one of our chickens, one of our hens from the barn, I should say. This is Loretta. And so basically today we're going to be showing you how an egg starts out from a hen's ovaries and how it gets to your breakfast plate in the morning. So to start off, there's two main parts of the reproductive system of a hen, the ovary and the oviduct. And so initially the egg begins in the ovary when the sigma releases the yolk into the system. And so then it travels through the oviduct and it goes into the infidibulum. So here in the infidibulum, if fertilization were to happen, it would happen during this stage. And so then the yolk travels through the magnum. And here in the magnum is when the egg white or the albumin would form. So then it heads to the isthmus. Now within the isthmus, uh, okay. So within the isthmus, it, uh, it gains another layer and it doesn't have its egg shape yet. It actually is, looks very pruney. Um, then it heads to something called the uh, shell, shell gland. Now with the shell gland, it becomes very hard and it gains a calcium-like substance and it hardens and it actually gets its egg shape. Now with that egg shape, bacteria can't get in, but it, they're small holes, that way the embryo inside the egg can breathe. Then it heads to the cochlea, and uh, then it is turned around and it is, it is pushed out and then it is uh, laid, an egg is laid that way. So for part of our demonstration, we thought we would kind of show you guys how we collect the eggs here on our farm. So to start off, we have right here would be our nesting box. And so what we would do is we would take a basket like this, and basically we would collect the eggs every day, which is one of our uh, chores we do in the pathway. So once we collect the eggs, we would go by the sink area and we would wash them off. And so then eventually what we would do, these are actually the eggs that we collected from our tents in the barn. And so what we do is we actually sell them here at our school to the local community. Okay, you want me to? Okay. 
So anyways, part of uh, animal science is we study the biological processes of animals. So what we would do is we would take this as a candling device, and it allows you to look at the inside of the egg to see the air pocket and that. And so, Jacob, would you like to turn that on for us? Of course. And so I know it's probably hard for you guys to see because of the lights and everything, but here, if you were to come up close, you could see the air pockets and the cell, uh, shell membranes in that. And so that's basically our demonstration. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, Animal Science. Up next, we have Miranda Perez from Biotechnology. Welcome, Miranda. So, Miranda, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? Living around the living in the neighborhood, we would I would see. It's upside down. <laughs> living in the neighborhood. <laughs> I would see, I would go past the school all the time and I would see the farm and I'd notice the horses out on the farm. And I always liked horses as a kid and I didn't really know what, it, what the school had to, had to give to me until I actually came and when I was in grammar school for a high school visit for freshman investigation. So I know that the biotechnology pathway is new, so tell me why you ended up choosing that as your pathway. I chose biotechnology as my pathway because it was new and I wanted to, it was new as of last year and I wanted to try something new. I first was gonna choose horticulture, but then as I looked more into biotechnology, it seemed like something I wanted to go into. So I know you're a senior, so the big question this year is, what are you thinking about for college and beyond? For college, I would like to go into nursing and this really, the, my pathway really helps because it, t it learns a lot of biology, which is what you need to become a nurse. And we also learn about, um, animal biotechnology. Um, so one last question. If you had to pick out of all the memories, what would be your favorite memory from Chaz? One of my favorite memories actually has to do in my pathway. We got a $25,000 grant from uh, Case New Holland and I got to, take, got to take part of that. And since our, our pathway is new, it was a really big success. So I was in the farm stand earlier today, and I know you guys make the soy candles, so can you talk about the process that goes into that? Yeah, we, we have been donated soy wax, and for our pathway, what we do is we make soy candles, and we have a bunch of different scents. We sell them at the farm stand, we sell, sold them at the flower and garden show, and they're a really big hit. Okay, sounds great. So I know you have a demonstration, so let's head over there. Okay. How are you? Hello, how are you guys doing today? Um, we will be performing gel electrophoresis for you guys today. And that's basically where you can get your designated trait that you're looking for within the cell. So these are our samples right here. And we use micro pipettes, which um, takes micro liters, and we use that to pipette into the gel. And so we take this gel and we run electricity through it. And as you can see, you can see that the, that the DNA moves from negative to positive. And you have to make sure, be sure not to poke holes through the gel or else the DNA can leak through. And so as it runs from negative to positive, since the DNA has a negative charge, the DNA runs from the negative to the positive side. And so as we turn this on, it's at 100 volts. It takes a while for the for you to start seeing the bands and what the band what the purpose of this is is to identify two different DNA strands or you can um, identify different genes in the DNA strand. Well, thank you so much. This is really helpful. It was nice to meet you guys, and I'm glad I got to take part in the, co in the demonstration. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for coming. Next, we have Laura Mora in Agricultural Mechanics and Technology. Hi. All right, so first for agricultural, mechanical, and technology, so you're a senior. Yes. So first, are you choosing 
mech tech for your major? Um, yes, I'm looking to pursue mechanical engineering in college. So how did you want to pursue this? Um, I actually have several relatives who have gone into engineering, and I've always been interested in that um, from a very young age, and I was able to explore that career path here at the school. So. And then how did you end up at Ag? Um, that's actually a funny story. So I don't live anywhere near the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences. I live by Sox Park. Um, and the only reason I knew about this school is because I had a friend and her older sister attended this school. She graduated about three years before I came here. So I um, knew of the school because of her, but I, the only reason I ended up coming here is because of the investigation day that they held here um, a couple um, months before my uh, freshman year. So I was able to learn more about it and understand that I, this is something that I wanted to do. So do you regret coming two hours to come to Egg? Uh, no, not at all. Um, the experiences that I've had here, are I, they can't compare to anything else that I would have had at a local high school, so I'm very happy that I'm here. So if you weren't at Egg right now, which school would you be attending? Um, I'd probably be at a private school in my area, but I don't. again, I don't think it compares to what I'm learning here at Chicago Egg. So then I heard about the Flower and Garden Show. Can you talk about that? Uh, yes, so the Flower and Garden Show is something that we uh, host every single year. Um, the Mech Tech Pathway goes alongside the Horticulture Pathway, and we create a display that is uh, centered in uh, downtown at Navy Pier. Um, we create something new every year. Um, this last March, we actually put together a 12-foot tall Ferris wheel that was fully functioning. Um, it was a very great experience. So I can't believe that you guys are the only high schoolers so can you talk about that, of how you're the only high schoolers? Uh, yes, so it's a very big responsibility that we have, given that we are so young and um, compared to everybody else, we are uh, rather inexperienced. But I think that with this school and what we've learned, um, it's, a very, it's a very fun project that we get to work on. And I think that it um, has helped me um, learn more about how to put together different projects like that. So since you're a senior, what has been your favorite moment at Ag? Um, my favorite moment at Ag um, was a span of a couple months. So our sophomore year, we get to go through rotation in each pathway to figure out which one we like best. And I really enjoyed that because even though I chose Mac Tech as my main pathway, I still had an interest for all six of them. So I liked that I was able to learn a little, about, a little bit about each one. All right, and you have a demonstration for us today? Uh, yes. All right, let's go down and get it. Hi, what's your names? I'm Max Elkoffer. Hi, I'm Rob Bro. And then what year are you guys in? I'm a junior and senior in a mechanical technology pathway. And then what are you guys doing for us today? Uh, we're making, making uh, cutouts of a dove using the scroll saw. All right, let's see. So this machine is called a scroll saw, and this can be used for various um, various ways. So um, its m its most important use is to make obscure cuts in different shapes. Um, we use this to make um, odd curves in any kind of personal project. So here we have a cutout of a dove. Obviously, in the wings, it's going to be uh, lots of circles and different uh, shapes. So that's what we primarily use this tool for. For uh, time purposes. Uh we just made these already, and uh, this is what the final product would look like. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Ag Mechanics. Up next, we have Barbara Gochi from Food Science. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> So Barbara, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So my brother actually went here before me, so he kind of introduced me to the school. Um, but it, what really caught my eye, my attention, was the different pathways. And definitely horticulture was a big one that I wanted. Um, but yeah, that's how I kind of got here. <laughs> so I know you're in food science, so how did you end up in food science since you just mentioned you wanted to go into horticulture? So food science was not my first choice or my second, but it was in fact my third. Um, I think my interviewer might have saw my potential for the pathway, and I am so thankful that he did. 
I enjoy all the different opportunities that come from it, and I, I love being in the lab, and I love my, my students and my teacher, and it's all great. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis in food science. Okay, so for the pathways, the juniors and seniors both have two periods of their day where they are in that pathway. So for food science, one, di one part will be in the classroom taking notes on microorganisms and how to keep them from food. Um, maybe nutrition will go over. We each had to make our own nutrition labels last year for a product of our own. So it's basically kind of what we do. And then the next period we will be working in the lab and maybe making that product that I just mentioned or we'll be making things for our farm stand. Um, so just to wrap it up, what are you thinking about for college and beyond? Okay, so I want to go into nursing. I want to be a registered nurse. Um, and I'm thinking of St. Xavier, but I'm also looking at University of Wisconsin-Madison or University of Michigan. Okay, thank you. So I know you have a demonstration, so let's head over there and meet the rest All of right. them. Who do we have with us today? Uh, I'm Khalil Parsons. I'm a senior. And I'm Gianna Ferguson, a junior. All right, and today we're going to show you how we can and process our homemade salsa. So the tomatoes used in our salsa is actually grown on our farm here at Chicago Ag. Okay, so uh, here we have a spread of our materials that we use to make our salsa. And uh, first, we have a scale that we use to weigh out our ingredients and grams for our salsa. Then we have a bowl of pre-cooled salsa that uh, we got from our steam kettle that we can and process in there, or we uh, make and process. Then we have a funnel, uh, two measuring cups, so we make sure we know how much salsa is going into our sterilized mason jars that we sterilize at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for several hours. And a, bo a pot of boiling water that we use to um, boil the lid shut on our mason jars. All right, so uh, we can get started. But before we start, Danny, for your safety and for the food safety, we have a lab coat and hairnet for you. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> All right. Okay, to get started, we're going to take our salsa and pour it into two measuring cups just to get an estimate of how much we're putting in our mason jars. So you want to be sure to pour it slowly and carefully because this can get very messy. Just a little bit neat so we can make sure we uh, even the sugar up. And then after that, after that, you're going to want to put your funnel on your mason jar to make sure there's no spillage or leakage from where you're actually trying to put our salsa. Because we want to make sure the salsa doesn't go anywhere but the mason jar. So we're going to pour it very carefully. Uh, Danny, would you like to give it a try? Sure, why not? All right. Please be very careful. <laughs> I wouldn't want to waste it. Yeah, and you're going to want to make sure you leave about, you're going to want to make sure you leave about a fourth inch of headspace at the top as to prevent microbial growth in the mason jar and in the salsa. All right. So maybe uh, a little, add a little bit, bit more. more. Yeah. All right, that's good. So now we're going to place our lid on the top of our salsa, like so. And when you're screwing on, you want to make sure that you leave a little bit of space to screw on, because when you're boiling the water, if it's too tight, it can actually explode. But when you leave a little bit of space to screw on, it'll uh, seal, it'll make sure the jar is completely sealed. So now we're going to take our clamps and place it into our boiling water for 15 minutes. And this is so we can seal the lid, um, process it, and overall ensure shelf stability for our salsa. All right, so after about 15 minutes of boiling in the uh, boiling water and cooling for several hours, we take out uh, the salsa, and this is what our finished product will look like. So after we take out our salsa, what we want to make sure we do is we want to make sure the lid is completely concave. So that's how we know it's sealed, and we also do a flip test to make sure there's no spillages or leaks in the salsa, and we're ready to go. And the product is now shelf stable and ready to be sold. And actually, uh, everybody loves our salsa. 
So of course, you have to try some. We have some chips ready for you, Danny. Sounds great, I can't wait. <laughs> I didn't get lunch. I'm gonna get some too, actually. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> All right, thanks, Danny. Thank you. <laughs> hey guys, so I heard you did a great job, so can I try one too? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Second. <laughs> that was really good. So um, our farm stand is open from Tuesdays and Thursdays, so you guys should get some. Thank you. Um, so up next, we have Darnell Kennerson in horticulture. <laughs> Hi, Darnell. How are you? I'm good, and yourself? All right. So for horticulture, why did you choose it? Well, first of all, I love plants. Um, just the fact that it's a class for it, like I really wanted to do it. And my mom talked about it and I had no clue the school was here. So, you know, if there's an opportunity, I wanted to take it. How did you get into egg? Well, um, like I said, I do like plants. And um, just to see the farm and the field, you know, how big it was. And just to know that students, you know, we take care of it and I wanted to be a part of it. All right, and then also, what do you think makes a big difference by going to this school rather than another school? Well, I would say kids from King can't really say that uh, they have a farm stand, <laughs> you know. So uh, just being here, I can help the people in my community, you know, help them make good choices, you know, what's GMOs, what's not. You know, my knowledge is their knowledge, and together we can make the right decisions. That was deep. <laughs> so how do you think uh, you can help others by coming to this school? Um, just, you know, getting more involved, you know, putting things out there, you know, social media, you know, hey, come out, come join, or come help out, you know, so I guess that's what I would do. So, Laura discussed how you are also involved with the Flower and Garden Show. Yes. So, what did you do in there? Well, um, for the simple fact that it's one of the most stressful times being here at Chaz, um, we get a chance to go to Navy Pier and help out with the Flower and Garden Show, which is um, usually just Hort and uh, uh, Ag Mechtech. And I had a chance to, you know, just be able to put a bunch of different flowers up and design them certain ways and being there uh, just for a very long time. And I think the Flower and Garden Show, like once it's done, you get a chance to just see and, you know, just admire your work. So then also, what was your favorite moment at Chess? I want to say my favorite moment at Chaz is when I gave my first um, tour towards the end of my junior year and being able to um, explain the different types of flowers that were, you know, I can honestly say if I can go back to myself three years ago, I wouldn't be able to really get myself to understand. I wouldn't know this, you know. So then I heard you're a senior. So what are you going to do with horticulture going on to college? Well, I'm kind of debating on botany and art. Um, but, you know, I, I really think I want to get into botany because, you know, like I said before, it's a big opportunity and I don't want to, you know, kick to the side. All right. So you have a demonstration? Yes. Can you show it to us? Yes, we can. All right. All right. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Lorraine Claros and I'm a senior in the horticulture and landscape design pathway. All right, so what are you doing for us today? Well, today I'm making a centerpiece for a table that you could use in Thanksgiving around the holiday times, and it's just something simple and easy that you could put together in no time. Thank you. All right. So what I have here are just a few standard flowers. Can you hold this for a second? And when you want to cut the flowers, you want to cut them at an angle. That way more water can get into them. And for the base, I'm using what's called an oasis. And basically, you submerge it in water, and it soaks it all up. And so once you stick the flowers in, they'll stay in place. And Darno can actually tell you some of the flowers that I use. Yes. So I'm going to start here. We have smoke bush plants. Um, here, sunflower. I'll put this down. 
standard roses, hydrangeas, um, dahlias, and football mums, like she said, and button mums. So what are your favorite flowers out of these? Um, I want to say the football mum, because of going over them, it was the easiest flower to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our class, we did plant identification, so we learned over 150 plants and had to memorize them. Wow. And yeah, my favorite are the standard roses because they come in a variety of colors and when they blossom, they're really nice. All right. So I'm not done with this one, but the finishing product is a beautiful centerpiece in a cornucopia. All right. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Josh Grimes from the Agricultural Finance and Economics Pathway. Welcome, Josh. So, Josh, tell me, how did you end up at the Chicago High School for Ag Sciences? So, the Chicago High School for Agricultural Sciences is one of my neighborhood schools that I have looked at, and my parents really wanted me to go look at the school just because of all the opportunities it does give to the students, and it's just so unique and different than a normal high school around here. So when I came to come look at it, I was really interested in all the different pathways and I couldn't just see myself walking around the hallways. So I know you're in the agricultural finance and economics pathway, so tell me why you picked that pathway. So when I decided on picking ag finance, I picked it just because I do want to go into a marketing background when I do graduate. So I felt that why not better try out a class that could possibly be my, be my future. So I really wanted to get a feel for it. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis in ag finance? So just like all the other pathways, we do have a two-hour period where for the first part of the period we are on computers and we do research on different, like for last year for instance, we did stock research and we were in, um, looking at stocks and investments and how just to be smart with your money, with your personal finances. Um, so what would you say is your favorite memory from Chaz? So... My personal favorite memory has to be when we were at the Flower Garden Show. Along with our display that we do host, we also have a place in our marketplace that um, food science and finance c c combined, and we sell everything that is made at our store and our school. So today I was here at the farm stand, so I know you have a demonstration, so why don't we head down there and learn more about that? Sounds great. Hi, who do we have with us today? I'm Carl Ferguson, senior Nice to year. meet you. Hi, I'm Ryan Reed. Nice to meet you. And I'm here to elaborate more on what Josh was saying. Um, here in uh, Ag Finance Pathway, we do a lot from business management to, uh, to accounting. And um, how we practice these skills, we uh, track sales at events such as the Farm Stand, Red Tractor Fair, and the Chicago Flower and Garden Show. And how we practice that, we use a spreadsheet as you see here, and my colleague Ryan Reed is going to demonstrate that for you. This is the spreadsheet we use on a day-to-day -day basis in our farm stand. It contains the products that we sell. It also keeps track of the amount of customers we have daily. The crops that we have on here range from the pumpkins we harvest here all the way to the honey that we get from the bees in the back of the school. So can you guys tell me what your favorite product here is at the farm stand? Uh, my favorite is the zucchini bread that our food science pathway makes. Uh, I'll say the honey. And I would have to say our sweet corn that's grown. So one final question. I know I talked with Josh about what he wanted to do with college and beyond. So Ryan and Carl, can you tell me a little bit about what you want to do after high school? Uh, I hope to attend a four-year university and major in agribusiness and hopefully one day on my own T-shirt line. Um, I would have to say nearly the same. I'd like to go to a four-year univer four university, but I would like to find a different major and not start my own business. <laughs> Sounds great. So thank you for being here today, and I look forward to buying some salsa and zucchini bread later today. Thank you Open for having Thursdays, us. Open Thursdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And me and Danny are going to go up and talk about it. So, wow, what an impressive group of students. I know, I can't believe it. 
I was talking to the teachers, and they said the juniors and se seniors have job shadows. So they get, based on their pathway, they go to different jobs and get to experience their day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I was talking with some of the students earlier today, and they were telling us about all the different research opportunities they were given, and even have summer internships, from ranging from going to Japan on a foreign exchange, to even South Korea, and then around the world, and even around the nation, which is really impressive, since some of them aren't even old enough to drive. <laughs> I wish I went to this high school. I definitely know that if I went to this high school, I'd come out with some really good skills for my future. Me too. I think this was agtacular. I'd have to agree. Back to you, Susan.